have three seconds left. Pick. All right, Team Unique, Hellraisers, you see these 10 players. Which one's the feeder in your pub game? I wouldn't say. Okay, who's the biggest I, deal? I, 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 I don't think anyone like. All right, no, no, no. You've opened a yeah. different bag of worms here. You're like, oh, yeah, well, some of them are tillers. Which one's the big crybaby? Come on. But, but you know, I can't call people out. <laughs> It's... Can't call out. See, this is oh, yeah. this is the I mean... thing. Like, you, we, we, you've started to like you, you've dipped it. You're turning <laughs> the casting. You're like, I'm having fun with it, but I ain't giving up on being a pro player. KP, I ain't yeah. burning those yeah. bridges yet. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Then. Especially just. A god, I think. You have ten seconds left. Showed in Egypt. Yeah. You have five seconds left. I think he's. Uh, it's hard to say. Like he's played three or four series now, I think. Um, because I don't know what's happened, with Lauren off. It's kind of weird because when Lauren off first started playing on Team Unique, had really good standout performances on uh, Void Spirit, and then looked a bit wonky in recent games. Uh, I remember I was casting one a few days ago where they had this very awkward pause followed by an unpause where Lauren off retreated from the pit fight and the rest decided to commit. And I think that after that game is where mysteriously he disappeared and GPK came in. So uh, I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. But of course, there's rumors that GPK is, might be going to Verse Pro Prodigy as well. Um, I think the other person alongside those rumors was Ilias, but Ilias currently is one of only two people confirmed on the Navi roster currently. It's like, watch this. Th Someone has some role to We're kind of leaving. One player is I've been looking. Yeah, the, the roster team less so, remember, because yeah. like this is a yeah, very different yeah, team to the last true. tournament. Uh, yeah, I think that two players are mm -hmm. like all the roster. Are yeah, it's Phonic and uh, Kasani who decides to hide himself as a Chinese name for anyone who is watching on the stream and going, why have they got a Chinese substitute? No, that's just Kasani. He's very, he's very top secret about his name. You have five seconds left. Yeah. But uh, Nongrad, of course, I think that's the biggest difference for Hellraisers is Nongrad kind of infamous in that off lane role, really big upcoming player like I would say two years ago. Uh, now being a POS 5 player is a pretty big shift. Kinda was really dire team ban. It's the still ten seconds left. You have five seconds left. It's kind of interesting that you bring that up like he was this upcoming player i feel like cis has this weird trend right where there's so many examples where we can mark upcoming players and i think the only the thing that's only been exposed recently with what happened with gpk's contracts is how much the contracts restrict and lock in these players right so um like kuman a year ago or around the same time as gpk was coming through was was like a big one um before non grata was really getting highlighted as, as the top tier upcoming off laner it would have been ghostic as well right but he got locked into i think his empire at the time um and that's why we start seeing those, those stacks you remember like last year the, the little stacks and whatever there were just all these players that they couldn't have an official uh org because they were all contracted by different orgs that had like light released them they said they can go play dota but they can't join navi or something like that Yeah. That's why. You have ten seconds left. You have five seconds left. They have a lot of fight. They have. Dire team pick. Are so At the same time. 
Gold Phoenix. Five. You have ten seconds left. You have five seconds left. Phoenix is potent. Wait, that they want. You have this egg. Have the can in the item that I more. It's kind of interesting the way these two teams have approached the opening of the draft, right? Like when you look at Team Unique, this this should more or less be their support duo, right? We see a lot of teams, I feel like, leaning away from that unless it's this potent duo that synergizes a lot or isn't hotly contested. And then Hellraiser's side, it, they've, they've gone for this kind of like double core lock-in, which is also, I want to say, not as popular. Usually your opener is a support and then like a flex between support and core. They're most likely your... Hellraisers. Magnus can kind of be made to probably off, but they still keep it off. Yeah, it's a bit. You have ten seconds left. Yeah, I mean, like credit where credit's due, right? If there were two heroes you could highlight the support category, have kind of held their own for many patches. Now it's definitely Rubik and. Um, Phoenix, no matter how much they nerf it, it hangs around. And Rubik, ever since, I feel like ever since they changed Arcane Supremacy, right? That's when we've never really seen Rubik fall off as a popular pet. Often actually just be like, you could feel a lot of good spells. Mm -hmm. Now, just a good here in general, like. On, if you get any type of like, you have 10 seconds left. Dale's really good. You have 5 seconds left. The bad laner. A lot of value. I think maybe like one way they could bring him in line balance. Because I, I, I do think it's like Imbar in the way that he's not one of these kind of OP like when Broodmother dictates a patch type Dial heroes, right? But like he's he's just there's never a bad game for Rubik, I want to say. Is... Maybe like step one would be if you had to toggle arcane supremacy between magic amp or uh like the amp the the duration amplification. Thunder yeah, is that would be one. They had that one. It was like one. Yeah, I remember that. I was like that was that was interesting. But I also think one thing that they have been trying. It was a container. You but finally, but like the fade bolt power is so trade with the you have five seconds fade left. bolt to get Dying the hero. Team so that's like the power of Rubik. Yeah. Have some strong. That strong. They did slightly nerf his attack speed, right? So they tried yeah. to tweak the early phase, but it's just that hero that I feel like whenever Rubik gets drafted straight away, my, the first thing I say is, well, technically this team really can't lose the lane unless they like ultra feed, the lane is going to be. Um, how is this, by the way, in this, this second phase? I mean, this should be their two supports, but like it looks to me as if how Razor's intend to just try and run Team Unique over at the start of the lane, which. Is something surprising when you see that Unique have gone for the Rubik we just discussed and the aforementioned. I think Skyrod pick for kind of likes the hero. I see pops. Uh, I think that hero can kind of abuse. Skyrod can just other really. You have a strong offlaner who. You can just play the Skyrod game with Black 
less region, a lot of damage, so potential for And then also in the game, he has a lot of ways of like faces void and angry him, so all their spells can kind of set up. It's kind of interesting actually, because I, I feel like we don't ever see Skyrath picked by the EU team. And I mean, and this is like something I've discussed with a, a few players and a few analysts. Is it to do with the different play styles? Because I feel like CIS plays more to the lanes, whereas EU right now, the meta for them is, is focusing on that mid game after the lane. Like everyone kind of... It is so, so... But at the same... Skyrod is almost like a player preference. Or it can be good. Some scenario, some players don't like it as much as others like I think I'd like to hear you spam it kind of that's how I kind of feel about I think the hero is is some scenario however it is it's a four that it's just damage yes it's a bit like Lena in a way hmm deal a lot of damage but you're also very easy to... it's kind of like uh, it can like kind of like Especially this back there, so it's this guy with game wants the lane stage, so lanes they they have really good setup. Yeah, as it's interesting you kinda of like bring up the comparative, right? It's like a lot of the time we see fours prioritize that they they have some means to farm, I think is one piece of it, right? And then they can scale, whereas Skyrif always seems to be this hero. It's in that undying category, right? Like you take it to just beat the crap out of the lane and then levy an advantage there. Whereas if a Skyrath falls behind in a game, it feels like dead weight. But I think with, with Magnus, Magnus is kind of... ...them pretty well in the spot on it looks like they want to press them in every lane. Because something we didn't get onto yet is this final pick five. But I don't know about you, but I'm looking at this and like, this is one of the more gotcha Viper picks I've seen in a while. Yeah, yeah. I was I was actually like, a bit surprised that it wasn't banned here. As they thought it's gonna. It's a very 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 strong hero here. Good against Underlord and uh, and the Spectre, and it's also a good lane against the Viper. Should be. I mean, Invoker can maybe sustain because this should be like Quartz yeah. Invoker. We don't really see too many exhausts these days, but it's, I, you know, you're not how, like if you, if you got GPK on a hero, right? Like we just talked about how yeah, amazing yeah. he is. You don't want to hear GPK survive in his lane phase. You want to hear that GPK is beating the crap out of his lane opponent and dominating the match. How I see this go, I, I think it might go 50. <laughs> 30 seconds. Yeah, would do fine. But I would say that in uh, Crush. Cross this lane, but at least like the lane, even if you're crossing works because I think the Viper can just out the uh, last hit you and still do a lot of damage. That uh, I can see it going fifth, like even in this lane. I, I'm not, I don't think Invoker is gonna win if he does, then he can rotate on the side lanes. Man, that is some weak digging game from 19 team, by the way. Like, Chronic dug up five, 5,000 battle pass points. What? what? <laughs> and then and then you just see this dig come out from 19 team. The smallest thing get 100 battle points. Like this this measurement does not bode well. Like, imagine you go in the lane. All right, this, is this going to be a foreboding moment? Are we going to look at this lane and go, yeah, I can kind of see Phonic not only dominating the battle pass digging, but also dominating in the CS here. Okay, I can see that. Playing on bottom, I think, helps. Pretty good time here. <laughs> Phoenix. Oh, this lane too. Can make some space for the... For the Spectre. Maybe, maybe they can be fine. But I would, I would, I would expect this lane at like level 3. Magnus is gonna... Uh...
DPK getting a little bit of a cheeky advantage in the mid. He was actually able to snipe Kasani's courier there. That's a small misplay by him. Starting off with this. I mean, that's quite surprising. It's not like, for example, Invoker's this speedy hero that's able to just run past you and get your courier so simply, right? Like, this is a low movement speed hero. I didn't see that. Probably just misplayed something. I feel like this is actually something, like, if I was to think of a mid that I talk about sniping Corey's a lot, I think GPK is really far up there. There's something about, like, I, I feel like I always miss it, and it's something I need to learn to do better, is just check in on him when the Corey's are coming out, because there is something about this lad, so often when I'm in the game, that he will manage to get the, the Corey snipe time and time again on the mid. I think at least in the art, it's not that... Totally, if we need more and more, it, it obviously does scale up. Especially in the mid lane, like I said, it, it is a bit surprising that you that easily. How do you ever how do you ever get get to hit those career? If you're not like some blink hero. Yeah, it's almost like mid, for mids, they don't really think about the potential for Corey Snipe from the laning opponent, right? Like, you're always yeah. concerned about the support who rotates into to yoink your Corey, but you never think about your opponent who's directly in front of you having the audacity to just run up and go, yeah, that, that thing right there, that's extra gold. I'm going to whack that. <laughs> I, Went for... I admit nothing but my sadness that you... What a raid, Bent. I, I, I have been seeing... But my sadness that you're gone. That good on this heroes that are kind of like mostly spell damage harass you. There's gonna be some right. I think if you do the right band, you right clicks and armor, but I don't see either of those in this. Yeah, I was figuring it was for the armor, right? Because like when you think about Phoenix yeah. as a comparative, these are low armor heroes, and if you try to trade as a zero armor Skyrack, you're gonna lose that against 100%. Yeah, yeah. Okay, doing fine. He even got the wave. Mm -hmm. You have to keep in mind, like, GPK can't really supplement jungle quickly, right? Whereas yeah. you can already see a Viper. One point never toxins all you need to run across to the stacks. Just the thing that sunny that uh, even though he's gonna be doing it needs to buy a lot of like mana region that stay in this harassment see the network even though he's maybe a bit ahead the network is still kind of even ahead for the invoker yeah especially as he keeps munching mangoes that mango just brought out has already been lost because of dbk and with that That's haste he's actually. going yeah very far to try and stay healthy, but it's not going to be good enough as GPK will pursue and find him in the tree line. He's just playing really well. It's also, he, he can be really well, so he doesn't have mana to harass him. That, that is what Viper wants to do. That's so. It's the cloud place room. It's the confidence of the way that GPK plays his lanes as well, right? Like, this is another yeah. piece. I feel like we're fanboying him at this point. Yeah. This guy, it's part of a new generation, right? It's something yeah. you have to highlight is um, when they are posturing around the rune, right? Most invokers wouldn't run towards a Viper in that situation, but it's it reminds me of those situations where, like, say you're playing a Marani for an hour, right? And, and you know where the guy should be. But let's say you're playing against someone who hasn't been playing the game for as long as you are or like the more classic one is you're playing in a different rank and they they do a side step you're like that makes no sense that's inefficient right but yeah. it works because it catches you off guard and i feel like that's something gpk does time and time again against his opponents as he he plays oddly aggressive on these matchups that shouldn't be favored for him yeah i think he definitely plays like those they miss some mostly it works because it just does it make it work but uh, but yeah i mean Definitely a fan by him a bit, but uh, definitely has been showing it like, why he has this. Uh, everyone is kind of hyping him up. 
Yeah. I think, do you think part of that is that kind of uh, he's young and new and he hasn't made the mistakes that like these seasoned veterans are used to, right? Like you imagine these mid players have been playing for 10 years and they wouldn't make X play because they know the chances of it succeeding in battle or backfiring is really high. There's still like a lot of these. Definitely does something. It's like not not by the book. I think mid laner, mid or lane anyway. A lot of different running around, kind of doing kills and kind of made a hit. He tried to do his own. Kind of crushing his lane and still depends on the game how he wants. Oh. Uh, I haven't really been paying attention to this lane because I mean that kill shouldn't happen ever. I mean, <laughs> maybe just playing to. He's kind of having a rough lane here, like having 21 denied. So probably just frustrated on this lane. Avoid like the under farm. Out in playing like happen. <laughs> what the f just happened? I mean, yeah, well, I hadn't looked up here yet. And admittedly, I should have because, like you said, the CS situation. But the yeah. weird part about that death as well is, like, instantly, as soon as I saw it, I clicked on BZZ, expecting to see a point in Pit of Malice. But that's not even the case. They've just been casually burning through his health and killing him off. Dyer's middle tower is learning to fear. Like, that's the thing about the Void. I think some, like, lanes like to play against Void if you can't, can't kill the... But the best way you beat Void, I feel like, is like this type of Beastmaster, Underlord type of hero. You can just slowly die everything. Like, play on the... Like, slowly down and... Die as much as you can. Then you can eventually... The Void is gonna out the time time walk and then you, that's kind of how you want to play the underlord is it, it is a, a perfect hero for yeah it's like you don't want this burst like immediately rubik kind of brings yeah. that burst but it doesn't matter because the side benefit is that damage reduction that comes out from fade ball yeah. as well yeah it's pretty annoying aura from fade ball so it's pretty hard to trade ever with with the underlord a little play attempt in the bot lane, Funnick off the mark. That probably would have been a kill on 19-teen. Like, is it me or would... I, I feel like Unico very much just... I don't want to say winning all three lanes, but... I feel like even the Spectre is incredibly content with the state of bot lane. It's fine, like... Then denies... Last it's... Or farm that... Uh, Agnes so is happy about this. We expect this lane to be harder for him, but... Made it work, so... Happy, for sure. Overall, I think you need to have to help out. Oh, face is void. Oh, he's screwed. Gone. Fade bolt is up and down on Grada. Seen in the tree line, but is able to TP away. So early rotation from Unique to the top lane. Try and secure this tier. Power well. That's a good set for the haunt. And okay. Running around doing this. Viper. Face really well on. Happen. Now they're going to be able to get this power and secure side of the map. Start warding this tower is under back to this lane, maybe. And fall like a ripe apple. Uh, enjoy this. Back to life. Ah, uh, music to a character is this. It's like, uh, I was just gonna say, it's like, it's cool the way that they're playing away from the Viper as well. Like, despite GPK yeah. getting that first kill, you because it's what we see in a lot of mid matchups is you kill your opponent once and it kind of snowballs, right? But Viper isn't that, the Viper's more tricky than that. You it's like, you need to kill him two, three times. So instead of trying to overwhelm Kasani. I like the GPK is playing the outer lanes to try and take control of the game. I'm using the fact that uh, what Viper lacks is pure he's a laning dominant. But uh, what what hero this this is a very slow hero doesn't really counter gank that well or like gank in general. Mostly what you Viper is this farm up you get some towers but uh, GPK is using that on his lane then now he's also just running around side lanes and Void and make this is abusing the weakness of Viper. Yeah, I just love how you brown the moves. The situation, right? Like he's got a fade approach. Yeah. He's got his boots. It's a free 40 movement speed hero, guys. Woo! So anything he's gonna do is he needs TP to anything like 
he can almost never match up the invoker just running around the map so he wants to go be somewhere he needs to tp oh don't play around the towers it's hard that's cool I mean, I don't know if Thrash is going to get this. BZC, he's got the room. Five seconds, moving across. Chrono goes down to get the kill. But you had to Chrono for that. And yeah, yeah. Get the kill. That's kind of what you need at this point for the Void. Like, you can see how destroyed he is. Definitely. But yeah, they use the Chrono for level 5 Phoenix. Happy with that? How they can, they can know that Chrono is down for more than... Tower. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. That's looked like the thing that might have been a good offset, right? Is you forced Underlord to the bot lane, that's the hard pusher, but you can already see that they don't care. With a Rubik and Invoker to take the tower. And if he's not careful, non to take his head. They'll bring him low, drag him back towards his death. Another one in the back. <laughs> Time is like so you like I think the Underlord is pretty happy about for them to kill Underlord, they have to be in like heroes or at least a viper. If the Underlord is not gonna here, the Retro is not gonna have a place to farm right now. He has to go to jump. I guess he can farm now when the lane is pretty annoying for the Void. He doesn't have many space, space to. No. And actually, they're trying to jump him right out the room up. He's got the max time warp. But that zones him away so he can take this tier 1 tower and just continue to shrink this map quickly. Just keeping a pressure stop with. Good, good to see. Playing against Magnus, uh, Magnus Void, uh, Viper, and taking off these towers and make map as small as possible for Hellraise to. It's gonna be pretty annoying for them to get some farm and space right now. Everyone is same area. Viper. I think the fact that BZZ's got off to a good start is the scariest part for Hellraisers, right? Like, you can see with this Hood of Defiance, like, I can't think of a game that I've seen in a while that's had so much value for a quick hood like every single one of these heroes is magical damage based right it's also like the i had the viper so but it's still like it... in order for them to get the to... they'll have other heroes as well. up for he knows well hold you know. up I don't think you want BZZ yeah. though. That, that's the problem. Like you see the slug coming and you run away. Because he's ready Come to fight. Come on, BZZ too hard. They will just hold. Turn it around. So. Hard position. Have to get the. I have Chrono. What they can do is that they do have a pretty good. They have a mech, and they have a lot of magic damage. They need to try to catch this. A lot of the magic for them to start a fight is really hard i think it's mostly gonna be dick is gonna that's how i see this game going right yeah because what i'm seeing right is like what you always say when you got magnus draft is what you have for magnus draft so you know worst comes to worst just let your void farm but the thing that unique is doing really well is skirting this this pressure zone right they're not going too deep they can easily be punished for it but they've shrunk the map to a point that Hellraisers have lost control of, I want to say, like a third of their potential farm area. And they're going to lose more heroes. Phonic, out of mana, drag back and try to secure away. Drag's 19 team with him, though. The Hornet Cross to the other side of the fight will be able to connect on additional heroes. BZZ is being brought low. Okay, Sunny needs to retreat, though. And BZZ, he might just live, he'll tick out for the final poison attack. Okay, Sunny, though, is going to go down as a result in a trade. 19 team getting the double kill. Yeah. Kill the beasts. That, but at the same time, fight and now they're gonna probably lose this. Or maybe not. I guess without BCC, they don't have the best push. Still, pretty good fight for Uni. Hellraiser, voice arise, and he can keep farming. That's what they need. They need to give this empire. That's their winning condition. And more importantly, they He's didn't a... use their big ultimates, right? They've still got the Chrono, they've yeah. still got the RP to play with. So now, maybe Unique have to be a little bit more defensive than what they're being in the bot lane right now. The RP. Oh, no hesitation. That time warp, beautifully done, but Illusion's yeah, still going to yeah. be brought down. He's going to die, but cool little play from him there. But, uh, yeah. 
how racist these. That fight they lost the top. Lost that fight, but they killed BZC. Just now get this tower. They should still be able to defend. Much needed space for Duraccio to keep farming. And now what? Even the recovering pretty. That's the power. For Though he had a real rough lane. Catch off. I guess this BKB part is gonna be time for the fight. <laughs> it's something uh, I've talked about a lot, quite a lot at the moment. It's like when we look at these teams that, you know, would, would be classified as like the tier 2 teams. Magnus is a simplifier, right? He kind of dumbs your draft down in a good way. Same as things like B. Uh, Kunkka was that for a while, less so at the moment. Like they, they just kind of fill all these gaps in your lineup and tick so many boxes that it's hard to see it as a like a, a bad picture. The fact that you can play, play it in so many... 3 to 4 to 5... Uh, like you can basically play it everywhere and if you have a... I mean, most is the best offlane hero I would say. In that scenario. You can just make... Make your carry be able to be active, but at the same time you can still like scale up and farm well. So that's kind of the nice part about the mech. Makes the hero. Really yeah, it's like you, when you look at what he has as a skill set, right? You've got this yeah. this excel this buff accelerant for like your carries that also increase damage in the fights. You've got this mobility spell, and you've got this giant team fight stuff that goes for BKB. Not really much this hero is missing. That's the thing, like. Definitely, Magnus makes. Void is a strong hero. Makes the hero way better. Spy, spy this one. Don't have the empire. Being that faceless void, he's shown bar. 19 is here. The difference being that one can instantaneously arrive in the fight. So, I think Hellraiser is just. They don't want to force in a fight right now. They have a PK almost straight. Void. And once they have that, I think right now forcing a fight would be. I want to keep this tower alive, but they're like hit their position really hard. Boarding up right now. So unique. Vanscore just scout them coming out into the jungle, but it looks like Unique don't want to fight either. I wonder if there's someone that they're actually waiting on right now. They might think the Void might have to be... Jump in. Closer. That's what they're waiting for. They want to see Funic first. Pull down the half HP. Horn to pursue through with the cold snap on him. Inkswell to get him away. They'll turn around on Grotto's throwing out the Soulbind. And Void is walking Soulbind. across. But it's too late to get a turnaround. They at least minimize the casualties to just the POS 5. But that's right though. Like, the Haunt you. Soulbind saved uh, Funic there. So now... Now they could take a mid fight. Uh, they have a BKB on the void. They have a BKB on. It's the probably the best chance for Hellraiser to take a fight right now. They're reluctant to come out to BCC though. Duraccio is looking at the back line, unable to find it. This illusion does have that time walk again, so he's always able to escape. Say escape. He's looming around here. It looks like they're not going to get the opportunity to play that Chrono, and it's just going to get back to this kind of status quo of split push. Both teams are a bit, like they both teams lack a little bit. Hellraiser is, just, they have a blink Magnus as well, but it's pretty hard for him to. He doesn't want to be the first guy that's just RPs to wait for a little bit. It fights for its life. Unique, have a Rubik, Boker who kind of start fights, but. Oh. Uh, they realized they before they used the RP, yeah. that's the goodness. I, I, I thought by the chat tools, I didn't see it right away, so... <laughs> oh boy, that happened. No. Happened. Unique is getting more farm. Have the Empower. Problem for Hellraiser is kind of only... Gratia, who is... Kind of clumped up and safe. Have to play like... Can't split up. Spectre. So they just have to be lumped up and farm. They're gonna be going behind pretty much. Farm that way. Retro is gonna. 
Yeah, it's definitely where you need to have their strengths in the, the draft, right? Because this Underlord can split push, arrive in the fights. The Spectre can split push, arrive in the fights. And they're going to try and start a fight now. BZZ moving in. Phonic's going to skewer him back away, but he doesn't want him. He just wants to escape. So by thrown out. Non Grotto decides, yes, he wants to try and fight this. going to force out the egg. He can't bring it down himself. So likely you're going to see the Grimstroke fall here, but he'll happily trade his life for that egg. Moving in. Illusion. That's got the time walk in two seconds, but the dilation is slowing that down by quite a bit. He will be able to move away nonetheless because he's saved by BZZ. This fight is proving so slow. Moving in with the skewer across. The horn's going to come through on the little trying to bring him down quick enough. RP does connect on the BZZ, dragging him, but there was a move away by 1910. He's able to escape, move across the other side of the fight where Duraccio is able to bring down Illusion, and Chrono is not good enough to kill off GPK. On the other side, BZZ will go down, but the time wasted by the side of HR allows them to get anyone else out. Fanscore might be left behind as he's got no spells left. And HR, big old must use, but they take the fight in their favor. That was a pretty messy stretch here of like zoning out three heroes him by himself. He wasn't getting, he didn't get the best chrono, he only. But he's still like. That fight was like kind of split apart. There was four heroes from L races fighting against like. Fighting eight, three heroes, but with the BKB, they don't really have anything to do. Bottom tower to is right now. So he's gonna have like free time whenever he. But a good fight for Hellraisers. That definitely they need a fight. They need now they can farm up a little bit more. After there's no haunt now. Uh, and what we're seeing from Unique is this, this very much baited by the non grider Grimstroke, right? Like two fights in a row now, where that's kind of what you feel like they're going to have to settle for. But this time around, they force the matter a little bit too extensively. We can see how HR can punish that when that's the case. Yeah, if they don't have Chrono, they should be able to do it. Without the Chrono, they don't really have that that much like way of starting the fight. No, and they might that's, lose that's more heroes. They're not careful. Phonic, nope. You're not going in, says the Luge. And it lifts him up and knocks him down right into the arms of Team Unique who are waiting. That's true. And that's, that's going to make the Spectre's game way better. Even though the Spectre should have Oh, Dylan is worried about this uh, Viper uh, Nether Toxin. Now he can play a bit more aggressive and he can, like maybe like sacrifice his life one time for his team, then he can come back alive and then. Yeah. Nice ages to get like uh, still there, and now they can probably get this tier two tower. Finding his best. And also like that the aforementioned situation now that 19 team can play out the fight. He's Giant much more of a threat to this Viper now that he has the diffuser blade complete. Yeah. Or it was a bit hard for him to now with this on the diffuse be able to be able to like pressure him way more. Even like now now this the uh, Skyrath and Grimstroke, they're gonna be so they they will just feed in. By 19 team gonna be a good uh, power spike coming for next cut up i also like the bkb vector i don't normally think but i think this if you get the bkb very little what they are sure there's rp and the, like uh way that they kill magic damage that's vipers uh, vipers uh, break so you get away for with that specter yeah absolutely it's case of uh, when you know you're prepping for the later stage of the game, where you know if this does go to 25 as well, you have to deal with that never toxic silence, and it really is a case of HR. All their heroes are magical. You can talk about the fact they have power, you can talk about the fact they have a void, but even void relies a decent chunk on, on the damage from time lock in the early phases, which is also magical damage. You already see 19 He's looking for someone to swing at, but they back away in time. We'll have to forfeit a rune here or there. Under attack. No Gale Taking this map. Got it. Surprised by that. I mean, there's some hero. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And they invoke. Oh, can, it can Counters the heal ray recently well in the mid lane. Grim stroke. Wishes he had some spot heal. He's going to be brought down. Viper's also going to fall, and Sonic can just move out of that Never Toxin. He won't even have to give up that Aegis. You probably contemplate high ground. I don't know if you want to go in, though, because there's still the Chrono and the RP potential. Spectre's too. They don't really have any heals. Radiant 
Base and farm. He has the horn, so we'll fight. They can have that. And you can already see their prep for bot lane. BCC's cut the wave, try and chunk it down. And now you have 19 team pushing in. So if you don't find a fight in the meantime, you'll always more or less be assured to get that tier two in about a minute or two. They don't have a ball. They still have ages of pro. Some hell races don't really want to. Getting the boost is. Oh, one. They scout one out. That was a beautifully placed ward, by the way, coming in from the Phoenix there to give the vision for that. So a little already dead. Non Gra chased onto as well. Could still go down here. 19 team will have the dagger available in one second. Lob it out. Trying to move away. The egg is going to explode in his face, though. Sunray through. Duracho trying to move away. The root on point, though, from BZZ. Connects with three heroes. Forces the fight back out of the Grimstroke. Let's say we're happy with that. We'll move away, knowing that they cannot counterattack. The right I'm actually going Duracho still. Yeah. He's maybe made a mistake here. He gets the dilation out just in time before Illusion can reach him with the lift, though. I don't know. They're, they're kind better. of looming around. And score is in slow problem land right now. That's three silences on top of his head. Off to kill off the bird. Fight for Hillary's. Yeah, I'm trying. Go. Yeah. Is really oh my right. god, these bashes. BZZ trying to run away. Uh, he is not stopping. He's reluctant to leave with less than one more kill, but he'll have to. Rich is playing really. Without the chrono, there's two heroes. Have the BK. Can play like this season. KHP, Gadi. Game looks. Just because of how strong this. It's actually gonna have a damage. Gonna be respecting this. Uh, the buyback gun. Like, the problem of you. High ground really well. They kind of have to kill. 
high ground. Yeah, that's the awkward part. Like, actually, you need give credit where credit's due. The lineup defends high ground, defends objectives very well. But, like, that's the, the thing. You don't want to be relying on that because when you look at HR's heroes, if they get the jump first, the damage is going to be fatal for Unique. Also, I just love the, the kind of ionizations in terms of neutral limes, right? Like, Paladin Sword, obviously, a great one. Duraccio. Also having this cast range nearby with the time walk talents as well. Like Duraccio's ability to initiate is pretty absurd. Like this guy did pick up. Like go in with. Unless you get a really colonel. You just have this uh, chase potential. Have your time dilation. People don't really buy his head. Uh, Scotty at least get you get that one hit. I should and suddenly you can get a kill uh, like out of nowhere. Especially now with this MK damage now. To be honest, I don't think he even cares about the slows so much. I mean he did take the attack speed talent at 20 as well. Now that MKB you also mentioned. Uh, again the film we're gonna see some perma stunnage very quickly here. The game is about their next round. I kinda wanna secure that. Pretty good tool for that sense that you get it, but at the same time, Hellrace is not gonna give that per per perfect answer for them. Having an Aegis. Both teams are going. Yeah, it's a case of like the first one was kind of for free because HR was forced to use yeah. the big team fight ultimates, right? Now you're in a situation where if you're unique. You really need this Aegis to try and close out the game. Because when you look at the state of the map from a building perspective, like this is either the bounce back moment for HR or Unique's ability to like plow through and end the game. Even though if you fight the yeah, okay position, but at the same time if Hell Races wins fight, they're gonna they're gonna just say it's gonna be for sure. Portion is gonna be a really factor right now. Your team is gonna get it, it's gonna have a good. Oh, I'd like to hear. In fact, win probably kind of is a bit fast towards unique, not gonna lie. Still these spectres. It's always spec 89%. I don't know if I'd agree with those numbers. If I'm unique right now, this is squeaky bum time, because HR are a little bit spooky. Gracio forced to use the BKB movement in, looking for an opportunity here, but unable to find it in the horn towards the back line. They actually go in on the side of Unique. The RP has to be committed on the 19th, but used the BKB already, so it means he doesn't care about the Viper. They have to back away. And with that being the case, the Chrono not actually doing enough from Duraccio either. You just handed over Roche to Unique, and you might even hand over your life into the faceless void. Cold snap, trying to move away, but not far enough. You haven't got the telescope nearby. You don't have the cast range, you don't have the life to live. Really nice, nice to play from Uni. A start. You know that all Hellraiser is behind them somewhere. But you start on this void with just poking him with your long range. And what void is this? Okay. That's his, yeah, that's the dieback though. He hasn't died since that. So you're going to lose buildings now. You just gave them access to your base. It's not done. They're looking for more. They're going to find also Kaysani looming around. And as a result, he's going to be dead just as long as the other two. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that. Force out by like long range spells without commit. So the void is needed. Then he jumps in. It's like his team is so far away. And the Spectre just haunts in and they just guide this void. Though this void is really far kind of the only hero. Hell races doesn't really... Oh, stolen cr Oh, they go in. There's going to be yeah. Cataclysm coming through and this just might end Hell Raises right there. That is going to be a dieback for Kixani. You know, maybe they were thinking about Roche after the racks, but now I think they might just hang around. Yeah, there's no buyback now. They know that as well. Well, for so if they catch Lil as well, that's at least one side of Rex. Uh, maybe they're gonna go for Rex. Yeah, they, they decided to play it safe. But right now, HR, you are on notice. No buyback now on your Viper. No buyback on your Skyrath. I mean, there's gonna be plenty of life. Base. Reaching up and okay. They have a lot of time. Yeah, nice, nice talk.
Cataclysm Chrono. I always love to see that combo. It's really great when you can uh, draft an invoker, uh, not have to draft a faceless void, and just get it still. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> get a Rubik who gets that. I still remember seeing some teams when they first made that axe change in invoker, trying to like spam that combo and going, oh, you know, it's not too effective when we just kind of rush this axe and uh, rely on that as our chrono damage. Yeah. Cataclysm is... You can get it, but mm. it's... It's often doesn't work out, but... It's this, like, out. in late game is good, right? But, yeah. like, if you imagine as your rush combo, because, like, you, you know, phase void in the early phase, you want, like, this sort of damage yeah. amplification in the chrono, right? Early Cataclysm wasn't really the way, but late game Cataclysm, very spooky. And things are a little bit spooky for Duraccio. They're going to actually move forward. 19 team does go in with the horn, looking for the back line instead as he'll snipe out Lil. That's going to be his dieback. Meanwhile, in the middle of the main fight, BCC holding his ground. RP, they're going to connect on the two, dragging them in the chrono flop as well to try and bring down GPK and Phoenix. And they'll be able to get the kill. But can you get more? Because I feel like you really need more out of this right now. Otherwise, Unique are just going to wait until they're all up and look to go again. BCC. They're going to TP away. Nice skewer through by Phonic. They will find the Underlord in the tree line and run him down. Oh. That's uh, how different that. They don't really get a good hold out of that. Like, they kill Lil, but Lil is completely away from his team. Getting those follow up kills is not a pretty cr uh, great RP from Phonic. Follow up Kronos. Still hanging in there. I mean, I, I'm not. I'm not gonna agree with you fully about that that horn situation. When I saw that, I was like, wait. I, I thought for a second in my mind, it's like, was this the third roach? Did we just get an ags pickup? Because there's there's no way you see the void and commit the horn at that moment. They were incredibly slow up on the side of unique. That was a bit weird. Fair uh, as well. I was I wasn't sure about that fight. I mean, that maybe they just feel so strong. They don't care. But still, you need to. Back this. Uh, you're in a good, a good. One or two more fights like that, and you can actually. There is still much to be done. Again, you still have only gotten one ring, and that kind of means nothing. And you know, you can talk about sniping out these supports of Hellraisers, but like the way that this draw functions, as long as they got the big ultimate. You know, you look at the Grimstroke, you look at the Skyra, they're a, a mediocre bonus on the side. They're not what matters for the side of HR. So this Spectre sniping out your four and five isn't really as relevant as it was, I want to say, like 10 minutes ago. Yeah, it's like, it to affect the vote of Agnes way more. They're important kills us a lot of damage and they have some spells that can be... At the end, it's going to be this strong. The fight uh, gonna be good or sell the top fight earlier when the chrono was kind of whiffed they just lost the fight instantly but now but they get the good rp and chrono, their fight even with they did they had to respect that yeah you can see how awkward it feels they just want to approach the base and they know they can't like the window is already closed like chrono is available again in 10 seconds rp was already up again and you can already see like the way the phonics built as well is he understands like his his role in this game isn't to do damage right it's to enable damage not through the empower but also through the initiation with both the shadow blade and the blink bag and also finding a timeless relic on a magnus in this type of game it's a problem for their lineup that they their powers uh, if they can't kill them Vector can't just go and hit the tower, even with Aegis, they can get the Toxin and... They have to kill them, and that's uh, the... On. They actually jumped in, they see they're out of the base, Kasai's the target down to half HP, the lift comes out from the room, to lock, lock him down and kill him. Soulbind will not stop 19 team though, he pursues forward, finds himself the double kill, Duraccio does go in, doesn't want to use the chrono just yet though, but BZZ, he's trying to force it out of him, BKB gets that bit, moves forward on to Vanscore, the chrono though, only just clips onto the Spectre and he's running for the high hills. And they know, GPK is there, he is pursuing, Tornado through is off the mark, but Duraccio needs to be careful, they look the wrong way. He might just get away with this. The problem is you did just use the Chrono for this. Yes, you forced to buy back out the Phoenix. And now they can move towards your base. Time is money. Something here. I mean, they're going to be funny. up in... 
Uh, more important. I think he's very much gone here. He's the man with the RP, and he ain't got a chance in hell of getting Better away from detection. this initiation. Or has he? There I'll it is, him. dust. Illusion is like goddamn cause and the slot efficiency. I mean, that's what they need to do. Just need to keep killing. Gotta run mid, but they just need to keep killing them and try to get this uh, lanes out. The best they wait. They might catch the Ratchet here. They're looking. No BKB for 10 seconds. Is that enough time to bring down the big bad boy though? 3.5k HP. Good luck getting through it. And with the Invoker chopping through him, it should be good enough. He's gone. 100 seconds dead. I think HR is going to be hitting the buyback on a few heroes here. Able to. This is a good hit as well from yep. straight up mid. That'd be a buyback. Chrono. Again. This time on a Lil. The sun straight through as well to bring him low. And the lift follow up will ensure that they're going to pluck this chick in the RP though. The buy Backs are coming out, they're trying to do enough, but they may be too staggered. Funnick has to retreat to Ratchet, goes in with the BKB, has to turn towards the egg. Mask managed to get through it, yes, he will succeed, but now the magic community is gone, he needs to be careful. 19 needs to stun zip up, Shiva's got to slow him down as well. Duraccio, stuck on the spot, moves across to the time walk to look to finish up the kill on the Rubik. Will bring him down, but they are all extremely low, but it looks like Unique are out of resources. They have to once again retreat away from HR's base. Rush is still defending. Cause the defense. The shell encroach no more. Yeah, let's just get the chrono. I I the but they kind of go out of position. That kill and uh, both of the super die for it. But I don't know. I think you're fine with that. They buybacks. Can now, now if they just kill the void or the man, it's gonna be real. They should look to kill those heroes. Yeah, you've exposed weaknesses in HR's draw. And it, like we've been saying time and time again, right? It's the way Unique has to play. It's like, what do we want? Kills. When do we want them? Now. Who's going to hit buildings? Guys. Okay, I guess we need more kills then. <laughs> we need to kill them until they're so done. Uh, I, I just want to like that's the, that's, that's, that's break the way them. Pushing. You don't break their yeah. throw and you break their spirit. That's the way you push. Kill them so many times that you can't. They just. You kill them so many times that the code just craps out, forces an error, and then kicks the entirety of Ninja. Uh, 12 hour game incoming, boys. Let's go. I actually wonder what would happen at that point. I still, I still remember the, the classic that Open had, the three hour game, where some really weird stuff started occurring, right? Where the graphics start crapping out and. Everything got really trippy and wasn't showing correctly for spectators. I mean, average game length has gone up a little bit. That there's more 60 minutes. Well, maybe this one will be a little bit quicker. Yeah, I think this good. In general, I think it's one or two months. Yeah, it's, it's become less about the lane. You can still now recover. As they're going to try and recover from this fight, as it starts with Viper being brought low, able to force stuff away. So Bind links the two together. But it, he can't get the RP out, though. This deal's going to be there. Illusion uses it against the Void. The egg's going to go down as well. And he's locked on the spot for too long. BKB turn around to try and fight with the Spectre. Moves forward to clean up Illusion instead. They zone away from the egg and look to regroup. And HR are looking a lot more healthy than their opponents right now. As Void will go in once more. BZZ is no longer scary for him. We might need to be a little bit careful. So I'm ready to heal up. They're going to try and Uber out. That's not good enough. BZZ is gone. Fan score. That's going to be him brought down as well. And HR taking this fight midpoint in the map now allows them to push forward into Radiant territory. Dice from Hell. Oh, they're... Also, they have a creep wave right away. So it's a perfect scenario. Let's go. Let's go. And they fight back to either of them. Still have the Chrono. Nah, and I, I think they've looked, they're probably going to look go for the juggler here like with how much damage the void dishes out now yeah they could but it, it is still pretty hard now the underlord is gonna buy back and there's gonna be a constant mana and they even have a repair kit of course gonna both be... teams get repair kits in this game they they're gonna be happy if they they're probably happy with the buyback back already close and roche is up as well yeah that's probably the best objective they mm-hmm They've been spotted out though, going towards the pit. Yeah, I'm sure you ah. must. They should. Try. 
I mean, can you? Diracho is pretty quick here. Your supports, I don't know if they're going to make it there in time. You can already see BZZ's yeah. going to be scouted by the ward. They're too late, yeah. They don't have a hold as well, so hard. Alright. Certainly this game has turned around completely. One fight. <laughs> And it's not going to get any easier. It's not just the fact that now finally HR are able to get their hands on that Aegis of Immortality. It's not just the fact they've got this cheese, but now they're going to have a Spectre on their team because they've got the Dark Portrait on Grimstroke. That, that, the, that portrait is going to help a lot. Get it on the Spectre. The Delusion. Going to deal a lot of damage on this. I, still... I think what you you know to, to feed into what we're talking about you break the the mind you break their spirit right you you take spectre as an illusion and then kill illusion with the illusion right which then sends him into a spiral of self-doubt on whether he's real or not fine game i have a butterfly as uh, agonist bought, bought it himself Getting close to that level 30 as well. It's, it, and also, like in this game, he took the backtrack of 25. It's not something we mentioned, but now it's going to get into a fight. He does get hit up by the Abyssal. I don't know if they have the damage. They're going to try the Electro to bring him down. Burner for his mana quickly forces him to fight. They move away from him as soon as they realize he's no longer a threat. Beautifully done by 19 team to move forward. The Soulbite is thrown out, but no place nearby. And the RP is being held onto for the moment. They're moving now towards him. The BKB on 19 team to stop him getting the break. It's reduced to the damage he's taken, but Deracho is healed up enough that he's able to keep fighting. 19 team trying to escape. The egg pops just in time. 19 team forced out of there just in time. And the Roof follow up to get faces void low. They can't even kill off BCC. He should be able to escape. GPK hangs around just long enough to bait him. And they get out. They force the use of the RP. No chrono was available because Duraccio never had the goddamn mana. Yeah, it costs you your horn, but you repel the forces of HR. You get two buybacks out of this. It's hard for Duraccio. Like, the way they won that fight earlier, I need to use chrono. It was just like perfect execution. They got the right heroes and they got this scenario again. Void is very split away. He goes in, he gets haunted in. Suddenly, this fight is like split. Void is just getting kited, and uh, the Spectre is getting to do whatever he wants. And whenever Hellraiser wins the fight, is that Spectre is kind of in trouble when he can't do this. He can't kill those. Hmm. The Retro needs to be a bit careful how he jumps in about this team goes in far he, he he can't follow him up stand that and then you can win the fights they fight in a way that void can use to help their their support yeah. is still part of the fight on help it's the dangerous part of this though right like we, we see what you what Sidon uni can do very well is the using his mana pool situation to his disadvantage like he is easily burned of enough to be able to throw out chrono and despite this being hyper late game scenario without that chrono you struggle so much to actually confirm a kill yeah you have so much farm avoid but you can there's gonna be an, like some gold snaps attack speed slow there's gonna be a lot of spells that you don't want to use your uh but you can get skydived in this fight use that bkb you can die so he has to need he needs Careful. The only thing difference is that he has an Aegis, so I wouldn't like him to make get the kill. But right now, what has, has happened in two doesn't get used. Kaida then team kind of dies for it. Think about more his position. Think about using it more. He doesn't want to. You know the perfect chrono. It really is just about one target. But they are not going to be able to find him quick enough. 19 team goes in the RP. Connects on the all the stolen RP. Beautifully done. To bring them all down. Durancho. Yeah, you've got this, Aegis. Yeah, you've got this, Chrono. But where's your team? Five on one. Bring it, boy. Not once, but twice. This boy is going to go to his grave. And with that move, Unique will look to try and close this one. Diracho will be closed in on. Controlled up. He has no buyback. He cannot afford to die here. But he has no choice in the matter. And once again, back to back. Illusion on point.
throughout this game proving why Rubik is the godly portal of the meta. GG. They actually yeah. just call it that. Yeah. I, mean, I like playing from the, uh, the combo, combo coming in. The stolen RP and the Cataclysm. Man, good stuff. That, that, that game just took a... I don't know, that game...
have five seconds left. Five. Dial team band. Is, as you said, it wasn't just that one moment from illusion, right? Like he he was on fire throughout that game. It's just it became more clear as the need for him to like have that ultra play became more dire, right? Like when we're at the at the end of that game, you can see how Hellraiser's outside Team Unique's base ready to end the game. Play with that sort of confidence. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they just run into the first phase and yoink him a Rubik again. Maybe they want to spin it up a little. I mean, Illusion's got plenty of heroes he's good with. Hellraiser, however, they open with a tried and true classic of the CIS region in the Shadow Deep. I played as a four, but five as well. <laughs> it's all the hero. And he's ready. The Shadow Demon. Line Shadow Demon need to. You have ten seconds left. Hero has some. You have five seconds left. His laning stage is probably resting. Okay. But uh, he's potential for setup. Say. Can make lives hard. Like some core heroes that can be picked. Now you when you careful that you don't Bloodseeker. And they say go Bloodseeker. Not a bad choice right now, because if you're using the disruption as a save, all of a sudden it's free set up for Bloodseeker's blood rights in his early fights. Uh and just overall really potent hero at the moment. Most teams have decided they need a Bloodseeker picker. Or like a train a trained offlane on the ways of Bloodseeker, shall we say. Ever since Zai started kind of trekking it through with Team Seeker in recent I has been playing. But everyone is playing. The item builds that you do. This laning stage is definitely like a laner. And you have one, one thing I'd like to see a, have some hero. You have five seconds left. Spell and beat buffed from the thirty percent spell. Say so you play like I don't know if we cannot that's the classic yeah yeah. Just, yeah if you have that you can definitely use than just having the laning state self then amp your own heroes well you're looking for i feel like you're looking for heroes that like usually uh aren't exposed the moment they have blood rage on right zeus is a great example because he plays on the back lines um ta used to be a classic combo for blood secret blood rage right because you have the refractions before you have to even worry about the amplified damage back at you. Um, but other ones that come to mind. Things like Sand King is quite nice as well. Although Sand King right now, not really much of a hero. Seems very weak right now. You have 10 seconds and like, who can... Attack speed. Attack speed is reduced. Blood Rage. Give it to other one. It's health. Spell Amp is still the same. For... Spell Amp doesn't get... That spell you 
caster type. You have ten seconds left. Yeah, I think the was it like I think it's half the value tax we get, which is still substantial max out. I think it's seventy. Um, it, it's it's not bad. Like it's a lot of attack space. As good as having like. Can definitely deal some heavy damage, but you have to be careful that you have ten definitely die. Left. Not only have blood rate die very. Easy. You have five seconds left. Yeah, because yeah, obviously I think the big change is instead of it being you take additional damage, just now you just lose a percentage of HP every second, right? Like, man, it's it's. I like it when they change a hero, so like what looks so simply, but is actually when you when you kind of dissect it, it's so complicated, right? Like if you think about previous Bloodseeker, like I mentioned TA, now you wouldn't run that combo because although you get the attack speed, you're not benefiting from the spell damage amplification at all. You have ten seconds left. They have gone for the the cute Grimstroke combos though, right? Like you've got the ruptures, which is nice, but also Rubik Grimstroke. I don't want to say like I don't want to call it a flimsy duo, but it's like they're very vulnerable. The same things at the same time that like mid game you have a lot of nuke damage with like double fade bolts and double. Game so game so far you have. What's it gonna be? You have also the bloodseeker or whatever you're gonna. A lot of spells that you. You have ten seconds. It's already a good. You have five seconds left. Hellraisers. Gonna have a little bit. I don't really. I don't really see best synergy here. Terror Demon can. They kind of just have like hero. Let's say work that well with each other. Can make it like use how it slight slight thing there. Yeah, I think it's like team unique that their synergy right. The way they directly yeah. synergize is clearer. Whereas I can kind of yeah. see it with Hellraisers in that you you know you have this disruption which sets up for Remnant as well as like when you root someone with Pit of Malice you can then disrupt them root them again. Sort of. uh, but yeah, it, it doesn't like while there is some synergy, you compare it to Team Uniques where you see all three of these heroes and you're like, I can very clearly imagine how the fight's gonna play out and how all these spells are gonna interact well. About voice breath. Most likely gonna be Radiant Team pick. But uh, like a core voice spirit with axe, for example. Definitely make there is that a little. I like this from Unique. Yeah, I like the Drow here, right? Because what you just mentioned, all of a sudden, Void Spirit, he doesn't... I don't feel like Void Spirit likes playing against Drow, because while you're elusive, there's a risk you get hit by the Silence, but also, it's not a hero that you instantly get on top of and can kill yourself. Maybe with this Chaos Knight now, though, you do have the follow. Drow was pretty... You have 10 seconds. Drow like this, there's going to be heroes that is going to... Chaos Knight. Left. It's a pretty damn good... There is some spells that can make like just tank up with the seek to get to certain five thirty minutes. Just these heroes so draw draw it can get a good lane stage and you scale. So far it's a pretty good seek. Not the freest seeker game. Can it can make Drow's life pretty hard. I think the big worry is when we have we see Chaos Knight picked right now. Um, I feel like the only times we've seen it look really good is if you have a mag or an Ogre Magi, like something that kind of amps you up. Because the weakness of this hero, right, is of course your inability to farm efficient. Like you have to supplement that somehow. Because if you can do that, I can't think of many carries that get as much value out of each item pickup than Chaos Knight. Go from my. Time, I think so. that much farming item. 
Phantasm is. You have five seconds left. Basically, you farm really well with cut a wave or that and just get that or jungle crisp. Where's that like see? Chicken kind of fast even without the farming. I True. I like that you bring up that point. Uh, I think the way I referred to him as soon as I saw that change, I called him Discount Naga. Uh, because you can now just, like I said, you can pop that ultimate and you don't feel bad about sending them just farm creeps. Whereas, you know, you remember previous CK, if you had a bad Phantasm, like you got baited in, it was on the same level of a DP who exorcisms for nothing. You're like, great, we're done. Yeah. Basically, double the cool. Now it's like 70 seconds. Or the duration is like. Uh, I think it's maybe 20 and then you get a talent which gives an extra eight. Yeah. Still like a long up kinda long up time on it, so you have with 10 it. seconds left. And the thing is like you can Oh well is that you can farm pretty fast with it. Oh or like fight as well. I just checked actually. We, we were really under on time. It's 30 yeah, seconds. Yeah, I think it's more yeah, I, I think it yeah, I, I didn't think it's 20 seconds because I feel like it's it does feel strong longer. And I, at least a few times I've been playing it. I didn't remember the exact number, but... Yeah. Yeah, and then, like I said, that that is that Phantasm Duration Talent, which gives an extra 8 yeah, yeah. seconds. Also, if you want at 15, I, I don't know if I've seen this too much, is the cooldown reduction instead of taking the 12 strength. But it's yeah, either 14% cooldown or strength. I think the cooldown reduction was good when you had the long cool. Now you have the 7. Yeah. That's good. Like, the strength probably feels better. No, I agree. And like, it would have made more sense before with the previous Chaos Strike as well, right? Because back then you had uh, a certain amount of time to wait to Chaos Strike again, whereas now it's back to being a real RNG spell. Instead of these goddamn cheap, fake RNG spells, you know, like Slardar, Bash is no longer RNG. Oh. I mean, that's CK. Weaker on the laning whether it's yeah oh yeah 100 percent yeah within willow ones this is a good i think the set of it kind of line up right now they have a blood seeker who can fight you have 10 seconds left all these auras and stuff kind of play you have five seconds left red obviously a great tool He has some good perks. Yes, he he's gonna have a really good lane against. At the same time. Okay, Dark Willow game for that fact that I have any disc, but I don't see. He saves as well. I guess you can. Dark Willow is one of those. It's probably the. Stay with Phoenix. You got like this little talent with some damage. Yeah. Amps, amps, damage. So. By yourself. If you have this Yule. Die if they're not. Die like that. So much damage. True. I should point out to people when Pex, who says this is one of the most XP demanding fours, uh, he, he's talking realistic ones. When you play Arc Warden 4, it doesn't count. Or TB4. Or Sniper 4. Who, 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 who would play TB4? Hmm. I mean, like, that, who would do that, right? Like, this, I, I imagine there's one person silly enough to attempt that out there. And I, 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 I couldn't imagine they'd win all those games. Oh, this guy has no chill. It's oh, this gonna guy be has no chill. nine players reporting. I, I'm gonna say that if you are playing TB4 and you've like mastered it, keep it a secret. How do you master a TB4? What is your what? What do you do with? It? I'm not sure. Maybe some maybe one day I will. See. I mean, I, 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 I was trying to make a Yapsil <laughs> reference. I don't know if it slid over your head there, but remember, he did do that. I guess I actually I don't, I don't actually remember. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean it was a few months well, ago or so. Yep, yep is. Yapsil is something unique. Yeah, he, he can he can make guess that guy can make anything work. But I'm talking about the general 
Oh yeah, the, the general public. Well, you'd be surprised at yeah. me. People will generally try that down at my rank. Uh, fan score. Although I don't get this as much of my rank. A little organized push into the enemy grounds to try and bring down a few heroes. And it's taken a long time, but they finally kill a fan score. Duraccio, though, it's been brought low. And he will not die. He lives barely 10 HP. And all of a sudden, Super GPK. Yeah, he's been pressured. Sidesteps the roots. Probably missed the they got on the wrong spot. Coming back. They're not done. This is well, welcome, guys. This is uh, the custom game. This is just the death match now. Oh, he GP. Gets there too. No, no, he gets away. Resident Pulse is on cooldown. He, oh, he gets the kill on Ungrada. Gonna go base now. Just. Meanwhile, look at top. Look at these boring people. Runes? What's that? Say the runes. Get the runes. Oh, more we'll kill. Go, go, go. This is what I'd like to see. This is the Vise CIS Dota, right? They're like, damn, game one was really close. Guys, you just want to have a big ass fight near the runes? Yes. Yes. It's been too long. Remember when we used to have the, the two bounty runes and you got that every game? I missed that. Yeah. That was, uh, that sometimes people. Action. I think Hell Resist felt like they were stronger and. It worked out for them, so nice little start for them in that. It was almost very awkward. Van score, I'll give him credit. Yeah. He survived a very long time. Probably longer than a Grimstroke has any right surviving against four heroes. Yeah, and same time the Red Shields right with like 10 HP or something. So it's pretty close. They bad as well. Hell races. But it was overall, it was kind of like an even. They got the first blood, but uh, also GPK got some XP and some. It's already good. matchup like void spirits and naturally like we already talked about a little bit about how this this void spirit he does have decent setup a lot of heroes on his team can set up for remnants so even without your yules you have that the thing we have to keep in mind is like we didn't talk too much about the shadow fiend in not oh well like there we go like right there i've been watching i was like wait is he just gone he is uh so already i was gonna say it's a gpk shadow fiend which is one thing but it's a GPK Shadow Fiend with a Bloodseeker, as even more heroes are dying in the top lane. 19 team does not care. And also in the bot lane, CK goes down. It's, I mean, they're just the problem for the CK is that he has some really odd. Good. He's not able to get these last, last hits either. Like, he has a four last hits right now. A bit surprised he didn't get the cooling. They're just denying quite a lot. Rubik has three denies and Bloodseeker has three denies. So even though CK is meant to be kind of, kind of getting bullied in. In fairness, BZZ is on a strong laner as well. Bloodseeker is not yeah, really yeah. a pushover as non is finding out. I'm worried about that situation in mid though. Like, you know, it's... Yeah. It's so gonna sound like the fanboyism again, but this if you were to name three heroes for GPK, Shadow Fiend is definitely one of them. Yeah. And it's like like I said last game he was playing against matchup, but I think not in the lane. Now he's playing He's meant to He's Xan is doing but uh GPK is still of the lead on the and this lane is just gonna accelerate. Level 5, as of his. Races are gonna start doing damage. To... You can see there, GPK had the opportunity to like spam out the Razors, but he's like, wait, no, no, no. Now, if I wait for 5, then actually he signs a situation where potentially he just gets dropped. I mean, I would say that the matchup is gonna be a lot on the roof. The 30 seconds, uh, both teams, I would expect the. Uh, to... To help on the rune. Yeah. Either of these uh, gets the rune. If, if guy gets this rune, and, and but if Xani gets the rune, he can kind of still stay on the lane, get levels, and mostly you want levels on this. Like level six on voice Spirit. Uh, good, good. You can see a lot of support. A support on. Yeah, I was like, bot's being covered. Now it's off as well. Lil's there first. Remnant thrown out. The rune is bot. Non Grana has to snatch it away from Illusion. And all of a sudden, Lil's in trouble here. He's got the Shadow Realm. We hold on to it. GPK 
Got Bait going back towards a different target, but the raise, little is gone. That was an ambitious TP to say the least. I thought Lil was going to be fine, there goes Chip. Ends up getting the kill. I think he's been watching too many Disney movies where the fairies never die. That's not the case in the world of <laughs> Doha. The red shirt is going to tear us here. This is... Another soul. This is probably... Like, I want to say this is the new kind of centaur Rubik lane. As in, level 1 telekinesis being useful. It's nice to have the blood seeker. Blood seeker in general. You just need that... Other right than that. Uh, that one second. <laughs> Illusion? Well, let's try and jump in on him. And it looks like with that two second stun, there's no way to save him. Need it much need a goal for direct here for sure. Definitely need to get. Especially with how fast Unique's lineup plays, right? Like yeah, we, yeah. we talk about Drow nowadays and how she likes to farm, but this hero can kind of be present early, especially when you have this amplifying type of hero that is the Shadow Fiend with the uh, yeah. the presence of the Dark Lord in the mid game. If you have a good lane, lane stage from Drow, that's more more because uh, you fast on the on the lane and the jungle and then you can go get towers and farm faster from laning state is the most go the jungle like like level four level seven and then you can fast farming the fastest you get it is from the getting all the advanced crystal doing 19 is life yeah, on I mean, this lane, there's not really going to pressure him much. Like, the, I feel like the moves for HR in this lane is very choreographed. You can see when they're going to try and kill you with a Willow and with an Underlord. It's a uh, better lane. For, not so good lane for Underlord. I mean, uh, Drow has to hate play against heroes. Let's get on top of you. Kill you. 100 to 0. This lane is not necessarily bad. Even Underlord has some, has the root as well. Levels. Also, I think Akfiora doesn't work against uh, Brow's marksmanship, right? Yeah, I'm wondering on that one because it would do. It would have to do with the calculation order, right? Because it, it does pierce yeah. through the enemy's defenses, ignoring base armor. But I wonder if like it's calculated before or after Akfiora's damage reduction. Like, I don't think you, can, you can't, like, amp up with crits, right? The damage from the pierce doesn't get amped up by crits. So, in theory, it's being applied when it reaches the target. I think. Yeah, it, it, that's in theory. And then, obviously, the debuff is on the original hero. So, I'm going to I'm gonna put a bold guess that will be flamed by someone and they will give me a DM to correct me, but that's not how it works. Bonic? I'm going to move away. 19 has to walk around. They try and slow him down enough. If they start hitting him with these arrows, he'll die. But so that's the post one draw for you. He says, no, nope, not worth it. Creeps too far away from lane. He's just having a panic, a panic attack right now. He needs to go back to hitting these melees and rage creeps. Shani is here, but... Ending out of this. GPK is just getting to hit his tower a bit. I feel like... Travel. Oh, I was just going to say, I feel like in this type of game, right? Like, when you look at Van School score, 0 2 2, you know, it, I, I feel like he's actually had a lot of, of kind of presence in the, in the way that he's played this early game, right? I want you to rate him on a scale of, of 0 to 5. How many Pexus do you give him? <laughs> I, I think it's respectable. I think he's been doing good. All you want to give is play with Draw. You can't kill them. Give your Draw the most. Not having the best best time of himself. Five and the Drow has a good time. Drow is mostly the Drow has a bad game. Bad because this hero. He's pretty he's like a solid lane. I just thought I'd highlight it because like you know it's one of those things we rarely talk about fives unless they're on like a 10 kill streak at 20 minutes in. You're like, wow, what a great five performance. <laughs> it's always the small things, right? Like you mentioned. He's given loads of space to the drow. 
he like set up a kill for gp in the mid obviously he gave across that first blood but it took them four heroes and a very long time to kill him all these small details yeah. Unless you play, let's say, if you play some uh, oracles, but not, you know, type of like flashy heroes stuff, and it can definitely show. You don't always see. Kind of can get the show off potential, whatever. No, not, not unless you're doing your Tidehunter 5. <laughs> I've got a list. <laughs> sure you do. So, all right, in the break, I'm just going to torture you and just run you through. So this one, does this one work as a support? And we're just going to come with the second series and they're just going to hear the dread in your voice. You're like, I have seen the abyss. It is pigeon shaped. Play nice talk. I mean, that's respectful. Oh, you're at you? I think that is a very dead CK. I don't know if Nongra is going to be able to save him from this one. GPK was trying to yoink it with a raise, but in the end, it's 19 team that gets the kill. Oh, yeah. Way better than I thought. That's the important, uh, still an important kill. Um, when, uh, like 20 minutes going as five and kind of digging. Right now, they're already setting up to get. No, oh, meanwhile, actually, they're going to defend top on side unique and they're going to actually make Puffonic pay for it as well. The boost of travel now. Up and online for GPK, by the way. Getting, getting really Ooh. old. Little kill on the Rubik and the bot, but I feel like Kaysani has been forced to spend a lot of time in this bottom area of the map, where maybe ideally you'd rather be able to rotate more freely. Just been in general running around not in this game. Not, he's still having a bit of time, like he, he farmed, but uh, spending a lot of time on these lanes and just like uh, waiting for someone to come. There he was like waiting. Thus, going in the end. Like GPK, it kind of makes that fast move and back to farming. Head of the. He's definitely gonna have even more farm. I was just thinking about that, that, that the moment where you said, like, he's just waiting on the side for someone to arrive on the wave. Like, how long does it usually take you before you just feel that awkward this isn't gonna work moment where like you're just waiting for someone to actually come for a wave and they don't i think it's after 10 seconds when i feel like oh well this probably doesn't feel it. all right well you didn't have to wait long for bzz and then yeah. feel even hung and dry like in general you want to make that fast as possible the more time it takes it's, well... it's like how that's how you Oh, it's interesting you mentioned like the 10 seconds as a support. I'd imagine that is right. Like, oh, maybe, maybe, oh, as, maybe a as a support is, yeah, as a support, maybe yeah. it's different. Or I feel like spend more time, let's say, like, yay, for example, that stuff, and you're like doing something. Tower is like half HP. Feels really bad if you're not getting anything done on the top. Mm -hmm. When I get those kills, and you want to be back to defending. Huh? Oh. Unique could be feeling a little bit bad about that. They weren't able to make a good play with the Soulbind. Not the longest cooldown in the world and it offsets Sunny's attempts at aggression. And, you know, in fairness, Sunny is keeping up right now in terms of net worth. Yeah, you're behind GPK, but I think that's kind of part of the course. Like, you're up against the Shadow Fiend. You expect him to farm quicker and oh, no illusion. The pain of the support when his ward is spotted out. Assimilate. Won't get him out, though. Sonic's able to tick him down with a fast storm. Yeah, Still, so the laning stage wasn't maybe the best for him. Okay, and now he's getting involved in six. Stuff done for sure. Well, he's trying to come in on him. Bedlam's going to be thrown out in a fan score. Inks will try and buy enough time, but he knows he's done. Power of uh, someone alone. Definitely this supports either this will up. And you don't really have any ways of dodging out on the Cursed Crown either. I think like closest you're gonna get is maybe Manta later on for 19-10. Like, like I said, it's a good Willow game in that sense that you, you have saves or defensive spells. Okay, Sunny. He needs some more defenses, but nobody's coming to help him. We'll try and dodge the blood right. Successfully does so, and it looks like he's out and away from this. 
That's even a one more step. Catch him here. Chasing, but I don't think it. Nah, they at least forced a step out of him, but yeah, he'll be happy with that. That's three heroes rotating for nothing. Had to. Size to it. Surprised by this travel speed. Yeah. Go for the big. I don't know. Travels is definitely have been getting more. Would have maybe liked the travels use then going for like. Tied it a little. Having a big. Yeah. This is kind of my worry, right? Is that word you mentioned there is the kiting. It's like what we just got a preview of at top is Unique's initiation isn't very solid. They Fuck. lack, uh, lack that for sure. They have starting with a rupture or like uh, starting with some. Starting a bite right now. Uh, later on the game, get some. Like, whatever. You can start a fight. And also, like that rupture you mentioned, right? This is where we're starting to see the, the downside is if it's the wrong target, for example, someone like Kisani, or if Kisani is having the start that he's having, you know, the biggest issue you run into is you rupture a target, and Hellraiser's, I feel like they're confident to stand and fight his five right now. It's actually they're trying to fight with GPK. He's got the Requiem in two seconds. He needs to buy enough time, but the stun will ensure that he will be brought down. They hunt forward. They find 19 team in the tree line as well. He's not able to find any vengeance. And on the side, the rupture, turn around, come in. BZ's trying to turn this fight and get some vengeance right now, but Funic will be able to escape. They just don't have the damage to kill him off. And on the side, the right here will find a freebie in the third kill, as it's going to be a triple kill for this Void Spirit. Fight for Hellraiser. Fight is pretty pa bad right now. I know. They're deciding to go for this travel speed. He gets, one he gets stunned once. He's just died. They don't have a save, like this guy said a few times. Just, it's pretty hard for them to fight them right now. Even though they want, they kind of want to fight them, but they don't really have the items to fight them yet. I was full of quite well there. Yeah, Illusion, like he probably, he got one of the best spells you can have in this game. He switched down now, yeah. but that Pier Malice set up that kill completely. Firestorm is also always the nice. Always have like good. Anything you steal from under. Just the Firestorm as well, against the sea. A lot of damage. Oh, let's see if we can do the damage to get dragged in, but they're actually baiting the CK into his own death. And Unique, they realized, okay, actually, you know, as long as we don't let them amass as five, we are much stronger than Hellraisers right now. Yeah. That is the power of their so They don't fight them 5v5 before. They have their items. Yeah, once GP gets, gets this, then it's going to be different. It's going to be like that, that kill this assassin. That easily like they did in that the bkb it's gonna be yeah that was kind of the weird fragility is like you you could see that when he goes to these boosts to travel the the kind of onus is on unique to find these pickoffs right they should be able to cruise across the map a lot quicker which isn't something i'd often say against an underlord void spirit lineup but the way that this game is meant to play out yes it's just they kind of i think that their issue is they they kind of jump their timing right and that bot fight was a perfect example of that is getting ahead of himself yep. so we went from midas wants to scale and i think that is the right way he does get really far hard to deal with like i would think Dyer's top tower is its mortality. They're gonna take a lot of time for them. More and more the CK gets farmed. It's Dyer's top same time you know, they attack. have the ass of draw, so they do scale pretty well. They right now. They have a BC mech right now. Bail, and they also have a BC. This is probably the gold Radiant's time for Unique. Think about making a together. 
Yeah, and they will all smoke up. And I am glad that the ratio did go for his Midas. Otherwise, I'd be face palming myself the Midas that he should have bought. I, I just don't think you can afford to go for like maybe an armlet build this game. You'll fall behind too hard. Um, and I'm glad he's queued up the BKB. The amount of games, especially in the CIS region, where I've seen a Drow beat a Chaos Knight because he refuses to build a BKB is baffling. Brother. Speaking of silences coming out on a non grata, easy pick off into a tower push. Like you said, this is unique time. Hellraisers might just have to back up and give them their time in the limelight. I have to be careful now how to take the fight because like I said you can't burst this uh, SF anymore. Same time, you also have the mech veil, so you have a lot of sustain just coming from the Bloodseeker and also damage amp. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, and now with that movement speed talent 25, like GPK has become the speed demon. He can pursue these targets pretty easily, uh, especially like the uh, the supports in the Underlord. Can really make a difference in that fight of like start the fight by killing right away, right away. And he's just gonna get, get even level 12, level 50. Those are his damage timing. Be able to just burst one one hero right off the start of It's fair to bring that up at this stage as well, right? Because when you look at the comparative illusion, he went for this Aether lane. So he's yeah. really immobile. If he gets caught, there is no escape for him. There's no escape for Phonic either. He gets dragged back. A lot of damage already done. He can buy a little bit of time with Yules, but it's just to allow teammates to get away. Or is it? Thrasio, he goes in for the kill on the Bloodseeker. Trade of offlaners right now. That should be all that she wrote. I don't think I'll be looking for more here. Lil forced to just fry his ultimate to try and stay alive. But now he's cornered and he knows it. GPK trying to go in to finish off this kill. He's juking himself out. As a result, they're going to lose the Rubik. They will get the kill in the Lil. Now GPK charging up the record with the BKB means Duraccio has no hope in hell of getting away as they'll run him through and make sure that they're the ones to take the bigger bounty away from this fight. Fight the... Uh... Yeah, they're... they're SF. The Dyer. Have relinquished their top tower. Hellraiser's needing to get them. They do late game as well. Still pretty even. No one I, I would say no not like a lead in this. Uh, but you can see the way you, the unique of itemized, right? The heroes as well. They're looking to peak yeah. around that 30, 35 minute mark, right? Whereas you can see that El is. It's one thing we mentioned earlier about Chaos Knight. While he's slow to these items, there is not many heroes that compare to the power spikes you get out of your big item pickup. Hey, like in the next 10 minutes, they probably want to take the Roshan and then try to pressure high ground. For Hellraisers, they need to try to oh. prevent that from happening. Uh, I think Funic. No, they kind of gave it away. That could have been a very easy kill because 19 team had the DD, but they were a little bit reluctant as they couldn't see anybody else in the team of Hellraisers out on the map. Trying to make the move. Play defensive and get more farm and more. And it's going to pay off soon as well. So you're looking for sign. He's about to get his axe complete. And we mentioned this earlier. Like, if you can reach that back line, you completely screw unique support combo. Meanwhile, speaking of screwed supports, Non Grata gets caught out and killed off pretty quick. That's become pretty good, Rubik. A lot of, a lot of spells from the, especially from the Dark Willow and Underlord, you can just sit about, so be careful with that. Yeah, most of these heroes are for good things. Movement in from the Willow on the Van score. Try to stay close to the creeps. The Ink Sweater starts up, but it's not going to be good enough. The Sans comes out as the movement forward from Kaysani connects. 19 team trying to force stuff away. Lift buys a little bit of time. Rupture there as well. Everything to try and protect the Drow. She wands up. Needs to move away. Funic is bodyguarding against this. The Gust comes out. Requiem follow up. 19 team trying to escape the root. Funic trying to finish this kill, but he can't. He does not have the damage to follow through. 19 team. The ticks won't bring him down. Instead, Kaysani falls and Funic has nowhere to run and hide.
As they'll just chase forward. He doesn't have his ultimate for 80 seconds, so no Uber ride out. And GPK is a race car ready to run this pedestrian over. They're actually arriving. Won't be able to find the opportunity, though. He zones them away. He saves the day for the Underlord, at least. Lacks a little bit. Now they have the bit of Malice and Dagger. He can definitely start. It up. He's already having the lens, so I already has some tools. Starting the fight, catching. Yeah, and the next fight, he's got incredibly good opening, like lockdown, right? Because he's got the pit malice and in conjunction with the lift, that's going to be a lot of time people are locked down. Should also not be under it that that's Hellraiser's reveal of the Aghanim Scepter on the Void Spirit that backfires and causes his own death. Fortunate death for him for sure. They have a BKB red shield. They, they feel they really want to fight right now or go for a rush. They do know that Unique is. Are they quick enough though? I feel like this would be a bit yeah. slow. This is a bit slow. If they know that they're playing, well, they they don't see them right now, so they don't feel good playing. Moving towards mid, the ping in GPK. The list is gonna come out. He has got BKB though. Jumps in with the rec room charged up, forces the BKB out. The chaos knife. He's leashed together with the feed up void spirit, who's trying to run away. So he's on his own here. He's already lost two. Yeah, you get the kill on the grim stroke, but now with your BKB running out, you are in dire tides. Gracio spotted out. Pier Malice is there. No escape from the hell that is the forces of Unique. One team that have... <laughs> can't like go. Now you dive. tell him. Like, yeah, it's just like you have Asaf and he has this BKB. Just gets the ulti when you use. It was close though from Gracio. It was perfect time that he might be able to like be in the Phantasm dial the. Requiem, then he can maybe just turn it around, but he gets the timing and also starts to set a races and then they will just die instantly. That's the problem with BKB. Okay, uh, when you go BKB on. Same time. Okay, it's a lot about this illusion. Most, most about your illusion damage. And you have, have those illusions, damage is not that good, especially at this point. You have damage items, yeah. I think hard part, hard part. that's the deceptiveness of Drow though, right? Like, it, this hero forces you to go BKB. Maybe Manta is an alternative you could consider as well. Because Gust is, like, overwhelmingly effective against the CK. It completely validates your ability to get into the fights. Yeah. It's kind of like, it's kind of true. Like, one thing you could think about is, like, I don't see two. Decker on CK. Fight them. That's one way you can get on top of the draw without caring too much about the gust. But um, overall, he still needs to get a lot of items. This, like I said, it's a good, seek, but it's not like a perfect seek. It's uh, uh, items get to that point. That right now, is this uh, re uh, just the ass of it? It's that case of when we refer to it as a good CK game, we're like, if this gets into a late game scenario, like, like Hellraisers yeah. have definitely put less pressure themselves from a late game situation, but Unique are applying a lot of pressure in this mid game situation as they're going to zone them all away. Terrorize has to be thrown out to ensure there's no pursuit from Unique. But now with what you committed on the side of Hellraisers, you may have to forfeit this tier two tower as the creeps are pushing in. Here too, I mean. It waddle over. Not really worth the commitment. I say that, GPK hunts, but you won't be able to find him. <laughs> Catch a little bit. I had to blink down the Rubik the Purge nose. Inside a target, then that hero is not. Probably, I don't know if he used that on the Underlord. Just ensures that he can't escape, right? Because he's got the four staff as well. It's all right, like using it. Not that you need to. Well, as you just gone. That was that was a nice purge actually. Used it on the Underlord. 
Yeah. Golf dinner? Same with the four stuff, right? Like, there's nothing you can do if that perch is pointed at your uh, your underlord right now. At the same time, uh, like I said, yeah, underlord is probably the best target, so you can. Uh, but it's not too bad on the seek. You have the BKB. It'll slow him through the that perch, so. And you will have it again soon. That's just the second cooldown. There is still much to be done. It's gonna be a sad boy. I don't, know, I don't think his team wants to fight anytime soon. You can already see the Hellraiser is committed to the split push way of life as they're just trying to shove in this bot lane. Hoping that Unique will come back and deal with this instead of taking more buildings. Before, as I've had the bigger Hellraiser felt really good about taking the 5 and 5 fights, but now it's the com Now Hellraiser wants to dodge and they want to split. Their split push is kind of not so good, so. Oh, they've caught him. Okay, signs in trouble. He's gone. Dead. All right, that is meant to be the most difficult kill to find, but Illusion's just making it easy. You know, he's yeah. still got some way to, to go to outdo himself compared to game one, but, you know, it's a good start. Last game he was playing God, now he's just playing good. Hey, he's like Zeus and Nyshawk at least, right? Like, he's the mode himself, yeah. but he's still impressive. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, Hellraiser is in a pretty bad position. Not sure what is the best play. They had to kind of just somehow try to fight uh, fight in their base uh, with the uh, Firestorm and uh, Dark Willow spells. And that's probably the best chance of them having. But at the same time, Nick doesn't need to go high ground if they don't want. They can just farm. Drow still get even bigger. Like, Drow is in a... Drow wants to fight right now, but he, he failed. Radiance and as a going on for that here also. I don't think they want to end on GPK. It's not really that easy to bring down. The Gus gets thrown out. Duraccio drags one in. BKB Phantasm activated. GPK raises to bring down those illusions and bring them low 19 teams hit by the purge but trying to chase forward illusion with the root connected on a free heroes to try to uber out of this they need to be quick though duraccio is able to get out well, that's everything i mean you've thrown everything in that fight really and now with the situation of the creep waves unique are probably just going to run down these lanes yeah yeah we now on the game i mean Happy that they get the Thunderlord ulti out because that would have been really bad for Hellraiser to fight that anymore. Ruby did steal a little bit again. Oh, he might die now though. Oh, maybe. Lil's gonna join him though. He's like, I'm not going down alone, buddy. DPK. I mean... They're dragging him in right now. He's got the BKB though. Charging up the Requiem. The slow's coming out of Chaos Knight. He's in trouble. Ruin on the spot. No way out of this. Is gonna be brought down. Yeah, I was gonna say it was a good. Well, it's so it's okay. Now, obviously, Duraccio strong. Obviously, back the BK. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure how you can feel strong against GPK right now. I think you're uh, uh, I don't want to be mean, but you, you seem a bit delusional if you think you can take this swole demonic being on. Uh, he's very big and very scary at the stage of the game. Gonna have 25 now as well. It's gonna have that crazy good talent with this build that he has. Like, uh, go for a minus armor as well. The lineup is not. I mean, you I'm very good. Bad. Yeah. But... Probably gonna go the CDR. It's just too good. Let's see when you play the cast the caster as a. Yeah. It's also like the the presence aura doesn't feel that great if you don't take the buildings, right? Yeah. Like, yeah that's yeah, where it's yeah. godly. I love they did it in this game as well. It's like it was already a good cast of being game because of the Bloodseeker, but also whenever I see that build, which you don't see it too often these days, people love their movement speed too much. It's usually yep. when you've got a Deso builder, for example, right? So it's like double minus armor on structures. They're gonna take buildings anyway, like the last yeah. Level. On the side, fan score. Will be brought down. Little full we'll side step, we'll snipe out the Cory while he's at it. Well, that was not very nice. Dark Willow. Ports have this here. You can survive against that. 
same way. Does the... Yeah, reduce a lot of damage though. Oh, disruption to save the CK. Gus, there's no fall from non grata and they're moving in. BKB's Gag Bay 19 2 trying to pull stuff away with the DD. Obviously, right here, he needs some assistance though. Purge to slow him down. Nobody's coming to assist him just yet though. He's surrounded on all sides. The storm disruption used to save the day. Illusion. Shadow Rays is coming out with the Requiem as well. Trying to do the follow up, but they lose the Drow. And as a result, they need to retreat. GPK in a bit of trouble himself. Fuel to slow him down. Chase is going to be there. Pit of Malice down. Forced up across to the side. The Blood Rope thrown on the ground. And Duraccio dead alongside Lil. All of a sudden, HR, what looks like a good fight, instant greed punishes them. They just want the. They like troll, like he doesn't have big game. Pop everything. Still so tanky, and then there's the Bloodseeker also. Throwing off these firestorms and. Pates Bolden. It's close, but. That's so fun. He's gonna have Octarina. It's gonna be even harder to kill him. No, it's, it's definitely getting a little bit awkward to watch. It's almost like mid game GPK has typed to Phonic and said, Yo, bro, if you kill me once, I'll join your team. And they're like, Get him! Just kill him! Bring him down right now! Yeah. Well, even more though. They tried, they tried <laughs> but not everyone is pulling everything out. Everything's right. Almost. They're saving the kitchen sink. You know? Yeah. Time like this, you need to save that for washing your hands. Russian here. It's probably gonna be the. It's still 19 um, there, at least in the fight. There is that pro pro problem still that. Okay, now has this really good. Level 21, like 20, that you have this. Uh, years now. So if your illusion doesn't die right away, you can you can definitely burst the, the Drow. And as of is a bit harder to burst, but Drow can definitely die. Mm. Damage. Yeah, the, the pose is ensuring that, right? It's 19 team. It's yeah. not it's one of these games where you can kite easily as the Drow Ranger. However, you don't have to kite if you just can afford to die. With an Aegis in hand, 19 Teen is definitely feeling that way. Yeah. I go for the tier here. They used Phantasm to save, but... The... Okay, like he's gonna have it again in seconds. So expect them to push that fast. Have it. I'm just looking at uh, GPK right now. He got the recipe in the Voodoo Mask, but it looks like he switched it up. He doesn't want the Octarine. That's, um... Weird. By the recipe as well. Well, I'll come back for a layer, I guess, but still. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like, he could have the Hex there, just for now. But he's also good. He wants to buy back right now for the part. And then oh, he doesn't know. Non grata in trouble. Four stuff to get him away. This slows the clip from the arrows. I can't quite bring him down. It's close though. Oh, Fable. I, I think he gave them vision there. Yeah, yeah, that, that is true. Disruption. All right, then. No. Yeah. Unique won't stay our gift, forcing them out. Instead, they'll go in and they'll try and send the force to the glue factory as they find the kill on the Underlord as well. And all right, that's the keys to the base. And the glyph so early. And I get to push more. Monik probably has to. Force. I mean, you have to buy back, buy back right? here. Yeah. yeah. There we they go. don't want. It's yeah. gonna buy back like that. Like, okay, he's 19 team. Just stand there and clerk. He's got an Aegis after a BK. BK here. He's got the BKB though. It's from the record me charged up. And he doesn't get the BKB off on the CK. He's down. The Rajo, he has no buyback. Yeah, he doesn't. Dirt is a few, few times I've been a little bit like playing a little bit maybe over excited or whatever. Like he's not, he wants to go on this Asa, but he's like. You make him sound like a BKB. dog in heat right there. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm just looking at fights now. He tried to kill GPK. He just pops BKP and ult, and then the Rachio died. Two times the same. Uh, it's like it's like he's going for the same mistake times now, and kind of like I wouldn't say costing them the game, but making it pretty hard at least. I mean, it might now. They're gonna lose more heroes. Shadow Demon. He uh, just got back recently. Brought down again. Funnick hit up by the slows. Needs to escape. Will be ignored because they just want more buildings. But with that kill, that's going to make the push on the bot lane even easier. You have ages, you have... Uh... Okay, Sunny's gone in. B 
BKB. He sees an opportunity to bring down a target. Illusion is low, but won't die that quick. He's got disruption, the Yules afterwards, but he can't. He can't use it. The Firestorm ticks him. All right. Let's... They're defending. Get the mid-rack. Oh, 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 Jesus, GPK. I mean, you are very strong. You are the boss. We understand, but I don't think that's the way you want to use that hex reveal and admit that you no longer have buyback. Here. <laughs> of course he doesn't. 11, 1, 13. You know, that, that one death, it was a misclick. It was just a misclick. Yeah, see? Misclick's coming out from Willow this time. GPK charging up the Requiem. Case Science able to move away quick enough. They did force out the BKB's Bidraccio. He goes in. Phantasm activated. Looking to bring down BCC, but the Guardian Greaves to heal him up is just too good. And Duraccio's BKB down off duration already. The Disarm out of the Drow, but she should be able to escape from this. Still got the Aegis to play with the Soulbound on size to slow down the reinforcements. So all of a sudden, the turnaround coming to Duraccio. The Slum Control on the 19 team to bring him low. They'll be able to get through the first life, but what is your means to get through the second? GPK gets dragged in. Two seconds stun trying to burst through him quickly. On top of him, the BKB from Case Sunny, so he's not target. They're going to try and will him down, but first they will lose the chaos there. Kitsani needs to escape from this. We'll go for the kill on the BCZ, but now 19-teen with full health could fight up against him. Pushes him away. Actually wants out of this. The Manta to get rid of the slow. Van on the side is going to be brought down as well, and it looks like the Drow is going to fall because the root control for Funic is superior and able to end the life of the boss one and unique. Well, direct your eyes, but... Ching! Whoa. Uh, hold up, though. He didn't take... He took the, the Astral step. I mean, are they... Well, are they I, mean, I kind of get behind his idea they're lacking damage to an extent, but the Dissimilate stun him for 2.5 seconds with these short BKBs on your knee. Yeah, it's, it's kind of good as well. But I guess because, yeah, he went for the Desolator. So maybe just feels like he needs all the damage right now. Mm. I don't think... They necessarily lack a lockdown. That sense, I think it's fine. Like with all these talents and this damage, is the light uh, light orb or production. Mm -hmm. uh, illusion, Vanscore definitely are gonna be three three kills for him if he just ever gets to go on that. Now they need to be really careful with their positioning. Wow. For Lil, I think Illusion's already a free kill for Lil. Especially the reinforcements coming in. Ruby has no way to escape this. He just tries to cause a little bit of havoc before finally dying. Duraccio is also might be hard. I mean, we're getting, we're getting that point. But there's a little bit of bite back from Hellraisers. I don't know if I'd say we're at the same level of the previous game. But we are starting to see signs of life out of the HR roster here. A bit like that again. It's uh... As a PKP, he's five seconds. He does have that uh, DR talent. I have a. Uh, often. There's potential definitely that they can kill GPK when he doesn't have that PKP. Well, especially they have on Van score. He got the purge out before blinking away, and as a result, they couldn't initiate a non grata. Instead, Grimstroke's gonna be left behind. Soulbind gets thrown out. Hex is thrown out in a voice break down to half HP, and they decide to just get out because he's ruptured. Yeah. Terrorized, but they didn't really commit together for cheap. Sunny went for him, but uh, he's pull up for him. They just killed the Vansker. But they they just smoke up again, and they want to go right away. Mm -hmm. This is a good Dry show. To the Silver Edge. GPK hit by the stun, dragged in as well. Already down to half HP. BKB just to try and run away. Can't even TP. Realizes the damage is too high. And as a result, he's in a lot of trouble. Blink away. Kisani moves forward with his own BKB, though. Finds the target. GPK is dragged in, killed off as well, and dead for 100 seconds. No buyback either. Uh, yeah, no buyback. Go, finally, the Ratchet gets to go that first. Now he's stunned first, and then he went. Instead of hitting him first and trying to stun. But, but yeah, there we go. Get the kill. Now they can at least probably get the tier two. Russian is also... And uh, we see the fragility, right, of unique draft, the way it functions. Because, you know, that was a two-second stun, right? GPK, the boss of the game. Well, I mean, this raid boss is outdated content at this point. We're like four Warcraft expansions in now, and he's from the first one. It's like the... As of his... will have some good timing, and he... Okay, definitely has been playing... 
But now you're at the timing that you have this 5 second beacon. Once that is down, you can definitely just die with this. The problem is also that you don't have the... Have a 4 stuff. You are actually, I guess... That's a 4 stuff. There's like limited ways of help, helping uh, if they get the goal on him. Uh, and Xandi also, like we said, uh, dealing a lot of damage right now. Item build is, is that that he can uh, sort of just... He is the hunter in this game. He's going with Linkers as well to ensure that the hunt never stops and they can't repel him. Uh, and yeah, you know, the other thing to look out unique, right, is... is you can see the kind of cute elements of it because they've got this drow ranger and this this sf with these cooldown reductions and i guess the mindset is like if we can just run from fight to fight like the fact we have bkb uptime is better right like every fight will be able to activate bkbs whereas you know for hell raises they need this big moment with that magic community to convincingly win a fight to do anything My so far, they've been finding that time and time again. Roche is going to be up in 15 seconds. So expect Unique to make a play as they smoke out of their base towards the jungle. Maybe they'll put... Think about playing on that... Uh, try to chunk that. Letting that... Take that over like this... This high ground here. They could potentially just uh, have a really good... Flash position. Mm. Yeah, courier is with us no more. Okay, they you know they're here now. Yeah. yeah, they've killed the courier, but this looks like a bait attempt. They're moving up to that high ground area talking about Rubik, however, has gone a different way. He wants to shove in the wave and we'll show. Now now they have to show on the wave themselves to kill this wave. And they can hit the they Russian. In. It's gonna die pretty fast. You have to be here. Yeah. But HR's not smoked up, yeah, so they see yeah. this. BCC throws down the blood right straight away to control up little Soulbind long range. Jump in with the rupture, the hex on the two. The piggies are running, but they're running their own slaughter as they bring his side down to half HP. Stolen, moving away with the Underlord. The problem is you have left Chaos Knight behind. He has the Silver Edge to get away, however. Shadow Demon has to fight back. And that almost looked a little bit awkward with the side of HR. Still going to get more awkward, though. They're trying to TP him right now. However, the second wave yeah, is ready to play. They don't have big uh, as a fault enough. Definitely try to mm -hmm. get the value of this. Gracia goes in, stun for three seconds. Phantasm activate. They will blow up from Stroke straight away. Fiveback comes out. BCC is the next target. Bring him down low. Bloodseeker is going to be burst through, and now Shadow Fiend in trouble. GPK no BKB for ten seconds. Drag into his set death with a four second stun. And at the high ground, they see the Rubik poking and prodding, but no longer, as he will also fall to HR. These buybacks, though, this is the do or die fight. They're looking for 19 team. If they can snipe him out, they'll have them on the edge of the abyss, but they're not able to do so. And BCZ is still fast enough to move away from that Chaos Bolt. Uh, GP okay, GPK just got buyback. Yep. So, <laughs> they were like, wait, why is he not, bu not bought back yet? Is this our moment to go in the pit? This could actually that fire now because they're moving in with the hex as well lil being brought low gpk trying to charge out that record to get the play out and he will be able to it's not going to fit too many heroes with the bkb's chaos knight brought low on the side bcd stunned for four seconds but he hit the rupture ensuring duraccio cannot move around they're going to bring them down funnick on the high ground manages to get up there but the bkb's running out and so is his hp pause they'll run him down the diebacks are falling in and they're falling in in favor of unique and buybacks on they have on Russian is definitely oh, just like the the, the good, good that that fight the first the, the start fights with uni they don't have buyback buyback stem then uh, hell races goes then they buy back and now again has all their spells ready and they can mm. this is as a faulty like so it makes the fight different it's so obnoxious. Yeah, it's just like, like you don't really have many ways of dealing. You can't really stop it either. You have the beacon. You'll always get this ulti. Mm -hmm. That's just gonna make that chaos uh, in the, those fights. And it's not... We have been talking about a lot about this asset, but it's not only this asset. They also have a draw ranger with a lot of farmers who have to respect fights. It's not only the asset that you can have to deal with. Yeah, and it's still that combo the other three heroes, right? With the Soulbind yeah, Ruptures, yeah. the Lifts, the Fables, and these Hexes as well. So valuable this late game yeah. through White Grim Strokers for a long time. Been one of those, like, I don't want to say controversial picks, but one of those ones that often people look at and go, why does he do so much? 
does. Gonna be able to end the game here, but uh, they can poke if they want to, though, right? Yeah. They, they've got the Aegis, they've got all the cooldowns. The, maybe the one thing they want to do is is they did use buybacks and mm. it's an important series for them they maybe back chill up get your you don't want to make any ways of risk good in theory wait for buybacks then go again uh, at the same time they can still and at the same time, like they they have buyback on draw, right? So they've got the Aegis yeah. on GPK. They could try and push this in and just, you know go for the juggler and end it. I think the, the dumb part for Hellraiser is when they're looking back at this replay is that buyback on the fight. GPK didn't have the money. That's why it happened. BZZ four second stun. Saw by the vein themselves in though. He's not the target. The red wing was going to come through. The PKB is there for King Science, who's protected against it. 19 however, trying to will down the target. Panic will get them out. Just in time, but, but before they could finish the BZZ kill. So that is for nothing in the end. And on the side, they left someone behind. They forgot about their pixie, their little fairy princess. Because, you know, fairies aren't real. No one dies. Bill gets out. All right. The problem is, while the BKB was used by GPK and by 1910, that thing we talked about before is coming uh, into the... Into yeah. effect, which yeah. is the cooldown reductions. Gonna have again. Okay. Gonna have the. He's gonna buy the blessing. Dragon blessing. Have that as well. Have basically that stuff here. Six slot with the egg. Yeah, yeah. Well. We think yes. GPK playing it. We think no. They, they both, they, like I said, they could wait for the buybacks if they want. Or but you are, of course, uh, admitting the Hellraisers are going to get their buybacks yeah, as well, right? That's, that's, that's the thing. I feel like it's not that easy for Hellraisers to fight inside the base. The ages as well. Mm-hmm. And it's like they're coming. They got a little bit of time left on this egg. It's about a minute. So they want to make a play as they'll move up through the mid lane into the radiant base. Do or die. Funic, the captain standing true, ready to defend these tier fours. But standing there won't do enough. You have to go in. 19 team. Disruption's going to come out to protect him. Chaos Knight has to midway. Soulbind connects on the two. Force them away. The rupture. Burning through the hell for the Chaos Knight. The BKB to run away is being brought low. We'll make it to the found barely though. And I say, you can stand there. You can wait in there while we deal with your buildings. Glyph already forced Sunny. out. Sunny bought the rapier, but he doesn't have it yet. And now he's playing it from... Bought it from the... Oh, now he has here it. He comes. Yeah, beast hexed up right now. First crown coming out. The BKB is available for Shadow Fiend. He'll activate it and they'll just burst through. Okay, Sunny trying to run away. The final arrow to fly through. He has to suddenly dodge it. The problem is you leave behind your team hung and dry. And as a result, with two now dead, you're in a hell of a lot of trouble as Unique will look to just end this game here and now. Final fight, moving in, GPK, celebratory Requiem, he screams yay at the top of his demonic voice as they run them down, bringing these heroes low, BCC is able to move away. They finally realize they just need to start hitting this throne as 19 team will turn around, bring the Ancient down, but not before it's off, Funic. All right. Oh. Okay, with Saint General, I think they were in charge of this game. Most part, say they were
Five seconds left. Don't do anything that can stop this man. Ten seconds left. You have five seconds left. Dire team ban. seconds left you have five seconds left ah yeah i see we've already begun before the start time but of course got a delicious salt caramel muffin oh let's get ready to go live in five four That sinister laugh perfectly summarizes this next matchup. New brand, fancy ass looking stuff. Big T, you know, big old eyes are clearly going to afford everything. Viking. Dot GT versus the small golem. Mud golems versus Viking. Back again. Hex, you on the line once more. He's ready to see this brawl because this should be one of the most impressive matchups. In terms of, I want to say, in terms of caliber of players, right? Like, of. of People that have proven themselves in more recent times, right? Like Farda 33, you can never underrate them on, on one side, and then Viking kind of storming their way through the tier two scene at the moment. It's like, like, tournament, so, at least in my one, I would. Vikings, yeah, they're kind of established team. Getting better and better. They're when I look at Mud Golems, I feel like attack, but they have a lot of talent. They have a great player, great role. They have still like Fada 3 3 playing a lot, playing together as well for a long time. And anytime they make a team, it's gonna be expected. Some, some, somewhat good right away. I, I can see this, this should be a really interesting. Teams have uh, and uh, that that rebrand I talked about, man. Fully Viking moving off the world. This team winning all these games. They they could afford a graphics designer, which as we know is getting harder with tier two teams. Just look at what Hellraiser's had to resort to with their logo. But like, my, what, what I'm curious is when they can afford a monster sponsor. Oh, I say afford when they when they're gonna get a monster sponsor because that's what we got over here this time. We wouldn't be able to run BTS Pro Series Season 3 round the clock EU CIS NASA and SEA Bam 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 24 7 dotes here on this channel. Off days, boys. Practice one open, and I'm a whip us over the draft. Shout out a monster. Couldn't do it without it. It's, you know, it's like really hard to find sponsors for these smaller online tournaments at the moment. Um, especially with the always changing rules. I'm hoping that with the recent changes Valve announced around broadcasting rights, we hopefully get more of these kind of endemic sponsors and, and these bigger players coming in and feeling more comfortable putting some money up for the tier two and tier three scene. There is some... Shout out to them for sure. Draft is a first pick. Mud golems. You know this is a skit especially. It's like it's like better bother hero loves this hero. Viking they have this tiny slaughter thing, which is also on. Yeah. Toby likes to. 
and also, they're flexed right here, with the tiny, so. right? Is the other thing. Can... Oh yeah, actually, yeah, boom, boom. Yeah, boom <laughs> is a tiny, tiny spammer. He's a filthy tiny spammer is the way we refer to them. God damn. Even the fours, like, you f all of them are filthy tiny spammers. Like, what? What do we got to do to this hero to make it bad? I feel like Tiny is not on the Rubik level of always relevant, but he is definitely up there for a while now. Team ban. Definitely still... Did get the little... That fire up. Seconds left. Yeah, it's a fighter special. Uh, yeah, he... uh, Comfort pick for. Really scary as well. Like you, you yeah. see that ban on faceless void in the first phase by Viking. That's for good reason. Um, so Mud Golems is the only team I've seen consistently bring down the Beastmaster lanes with, where it's like faceless void. It's that far. Which you know, as you know, it's like that's a that's a beastmaster favored lane, right? Like yeah, you should yeah, force yeah. void out. But not only would they hold back the power of the beast, they'd be killing beastmaster and rubik, for example. Definitely say I would. I also saw one of the. Yeah, it did. Strong lane or like how they played this, but also played together also. They're definitely using the how they have been playing. And you know, you, you've been like even boss five player for a long time now, right? And you, you've kind of you've been in a lot of teams to probably kind of experience the back and forth. Like, how hard is it to kind of have the level of game sense as a boss five that someone like Fada is kind of? I, I feel like he's revered for right. The, the first thing that so many players said when they heard that he was becoming a boss five with Alliance. Uh, was that it made so much sense in their mind because this man is like an oracle that predicts the game five minutes ahead of time. I'm not, I don't know him. He definitely he likes to say, like, pull out some stuff. You have 10 seconds. What I also... Uh, he... You captain, because it's seconds left. player. Likes to give his stuff, so... Here now, uh, five, and I think stroke. playing really well. Yeah, because I think that was a big surprise when the Alliance done that shuffle, right? Where they got rid of um, Fada and 33. Obviously, some people are like, oh, yeah, but you're back S4, you can't resist that. Uh, but it was maybe awkward because they didn't have a five lined up originally, and also that squad as a whole was developing incredibly well. Like, or like player wise, I don't think. I'm sure, they were like. There mo must have been something else. I end up signing that, but who cares? Kind of like it's already in the past. Uh, they're both, but are great players. They have made a. I think their team again has a great potential. Coming a strong, fighting for, like, you have ten seconds good spot in EU. In terms of like. Sure. Maybe we'll see them slide into some of the bigger upcoming tournaments where you, you know you get like the secret balance out as well. Yeah. I, I like the way that they do this as well. Um, my Golems have proven that they can you know have something a bit of spice like maybe fight through on a Viper. Um, they ground the draft very well. I feel like Beastmaster is one of the kind of the anchor points. Um, whenever they seem to draft this, the, the 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 dynamic at play for the whole team is very smooth, and I, I think that. That comes back to what we were talking about with Magnus earlier, right? These are heroes that when you're a new stack or your tier two team or whatever, they simplify the game, which can deal with the teething issues new teams usually have. Drafting a bit. One of the strengths of three players like hate drafting against. I placed so many. You always either have to have some kind of some kind of idea that's what he has so many there to that's which they are very known for his like and with like a lot of these heroes can make make some money 
happen and now. Uh, Beastmaster obviously is a great tool as well. Viking, we didn't talk about too much. Air draft as well. Their lineup has already. Grimstocks, RR. You have like a lot of these inks. You have 10 seconds Either. left. You have a uh, soul bind. You have five seconds left. Guard. Then Ready this morphine pick. Mm. Fly stealer. You get the rage for yourself. Playing as beast. I think. I've seen this lane go. You have ten seconds left. In that sense, I. You have five seconds left. They they're definitely not gonna be like crushed on this lane. Dire team ban. I would not be surprised if it's gonna. Overall, it's a good. Very limited things that. Was the game. Of course, the worry is if the lane goes even, it's a beast master, right? In that situation, yeah. compared to a morph thing, a like morph still you just wants to farm a bit. Beast left. is this hero that just applies pressure onto these towers very five early. Seconds left. I guess the other thing to look at is there's a kind of pattern establishing here. Like Mud Golem's ridiculous amount of team fight. Uh, Viking, very pickoff oriented. They kind of lack like the. Mud Golems can definitely take if they have this. They also have very easily. Direct is very easy. Snapfire also. Building take. You have five seconds left. Dire team pick. The Life Stealer. You can just take. Uh, when I decide to go for the Desert build, you can fast, uh, fast gameplay. Mm -hmm. I, f I feel like I prefer those builds right now. Like, I think life's still the, the most, I think, most successful build. Yeah, you know, I'm not going to whip out stats, okay? Because I don't have the beautiful silver hair, and I'm not wearing a suit. And I'm also, I don't have a degree in economics. But I'm pretty sure if you were to list, like, builds that have the highest win rate, Armlet Deso for life still is probably the highest right now. It does feel the... I have seen the MKB. Here it makes sense. A Starmer Deso, like, always, like, kind of like a super. Makes your hero stronger, but it also makes. Left. Not only when you're pushing towers, but if you have some heroes. You have five seconds left. It does feel really. Please, Volker. Please don't pick TA, please don't pick TA, please don't pick. Sorry, I've, got, I've kind of got someone against TA and Life Sealer together. I've seen a lot of teams try and do it in it. Uh, I think the best, yeah. like, PyCat summed up pretty simply yesterday when we saw it, is that the heroes do the same thing. So, especially now how you want to play Lifestyle, you want to build, wanna build the Deso as well. Yay. Play some Orchid TA. Orchid TA? Alright, that, that's definitely one way to go. Um... I'm wondering if we're going to see something like Alina, because this is Baranya we're talking about. Yeah, I, I, I was looking at Baranya, he likes to play that already a pretty... Not that much. I mean, there's Tiny and Slaughter that I some catch for you. Nice hero again. I speak for the Choose your hero. Nah, I mean, that's also something that he... I think... Yeah, it... I, I, I think the three likely ones were... Lena, Nature's Prophet, and Kunka, I think, are the ones that come to mind for Branya a lot. It's also like all those are pretty good. Yeah, this is a good. It works really good. We have this already, this nice. So uh... well, now they can also profit to just. Level 6, he has this. And then he can just help his silence really early. Then if they get that fast play, they can make a power push. Prophet is pretty cool. It's nice, like their heroes line up really well with each other. They they don't need to wait for like certain item timings. To, like go keep time. Sure, when they get to like Deso and Orchid time, nice, but they, they don't need to 
wait for something. For for example, for like Morphling kind of wants to f like he mm -hmm. wants at least like a yeah. And then also you got this case where like you know we've seen plenty of games where Aramis pops off by himself, finds a lot of kills, gets a quick blink. But mo your average tiny game, there's a moment where he needs a lane, right? Where he's like 13, 1400 gold in, and you need to give him a few minutes to just get that blink dagger. Problem of their lineup, I feel like on white. Mud golems, they do well in their lane. They can just kind of run over Vikings here. Mm -hmm. They don't really use a deal. Their push that much. Like they have is uh, Celery's Grimstroke. That's kind of it's gonna be a limit that part. Mm -hmm. But one thing at least, running around space making. Help his sidelines enough to make like space for his. It is a good morphling game. But if the morphling gets to, it's like I expect him to like go like a E blade Manta. If he gets those like, it can be really hard for a Vikings to. I mean, uh, Mud Golems to deal. Do this. Yeah, and Boom of course is also known to have this. Just kind of GPK moments that we were talking about earlier where like you see this matchup that shouldn't be favored and when you're talking about the heroes like the Invoker, the Tiny, he's been now, uh, known to just take a very odd first blood or early kill lead against what would normally be seen as a counter in his mid component. Let's do this. Like um, has at least like a type of, type of player that doesn't really care too much. Like mm -hmm. he has some some heroes that he hate. Place them into counters. Yeah. He, 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 like some of these tops and wipes. Just goes around, makes a lot of space, and you, I like that. Sometimes it works out, it sometimes doesn't work out. But it does make it often, so it's like the type of mid player likes to do it. Can pick his hero early, like this time they last pick this hero. Often they can, like, first pick his hero, second pick his hero. Play like an Ember to, I don't know, Viper. Yes. Sometimes make it work, sometimes not, but he will play it and <laughs> cool to see that he is so confident on his plane that he can still make work even. I love that you bring that up actually, because um the, the thing with Boom is that whenever you look at the way Viking draft, like yes they gave him the farm pick here, but it, it it wasn't the roundabout pick, it wasn't the gotcha pick opportunity, right? Like usually Shad is the one who's given yeah. the, the final pick. He's given priority, right? You think of the games where he gets his Svens, his Drows, whatever. Like always look to set him up and boom is that he's that slot piece, right? Whatever is missing, he'll try and do it for the team. They they play a lot on Shad to carry them and they're very good players. Carry mm. them, so they work very well with that. I think what's interesting about that as well is the way they do 4 Protect 1. They're very active as 5 for a 4 Protect 1, right? If you look at these other teams where they'll draft an anti-mage and they just want to guard for a long time. Shad, by the way, is in a lot of trouble. Dead here, yeah. I like that identify. We just talked about he's the win condition. My goal was like, well, he can't be a win condition if he's dead. <laughs> that's a, that's the nice start from there. Playing in the trees and abusing the fact that Morphling is a very weak hero. One and... My father actually wants to stay here. I mean, you could kill him again if he walks up, right? If the boar slows. Good, you don't have fire spirits now, so it's a little bit damage this time. Yeah. Uh, at least the good thing for them is Skitter is kind of fine. One we want, he has creeps on the... Toby is kind of bullying him. Yeah, life's just not really here you can force out. Like, life's still a, it's... Right now, it's kind of like what Ricky was, right? You know, with all the armor and the HP regen, it's like, how do you how do you aggress this hero? Life still fits that category as well. Yeah. How does that that works out now. Now it's gonna be the planes again. Don't get some nice. Cool. He's pulling his own leg a little bit here before he can actually play with Celery. Shad's moving across, but Lan's able to walk it off. Uh, Mud Golems, what's happening? Because they have this. Uh, started off with the first blood, and now they also got the high bits of wave. Now they have the wave under their, their tower, so good mm. thing for the beast. He needs to get the level three. Kind of fast, so they can. Yep. 
Huh? Seller has been pressured. This this yeah, was the level. desperation of that original move, right? Like he knew he had to kill Phoenix at that point because as soon as you get level two on Phoenix, Broomstroke has to be on the defensive pretty heavily. I guess the uh, the thing we haven't talked about is around the mid lane at the moment. And, and one thing we didn't get into is like the way the life still plays now. I love it when we're seeing teams draft it with this kind of squishy other core, right? Like the leaners, the the Tinkers, the Nature's Prophet, because of the way that his Infest now works, he becomes this weird pseudo support in the middle of a chaotic fight. Yeah. Which is why support lifestyle are coming to a game. <laughs> I mean, I've been thinking about it. I don't think it's even that bad. No, I mean, no, definitely it's... The, the, the nerves did, did hurt the hero when it was like actual team. Mm -hmm. I would still say it's not that bad. Yeah, like you got, I mean, I've tried it actually. It's like, it's weird because you don't feel like you're doing a lot of damage, but because of the nature of the hero, what you're doing is you're just playing attrition, right? You're slowly whittling people down. You like start with an oob and you have 325 movement speed on this hero. And then, you know, just rush a basher because why not? Okay, that part is maybe variable in the build. <laughs> or Lester, I think, by Auras and just. Go on your carry after some time, you know. Mm -hmm. There. Then. There for the rest of the game. Okay, so here's my problem. I get to level 12. I get the, the Frenzy Ancient. And I try to get my carry to go fight. And they won't. <laughs> I want to give the buff. Okay. Yeah, you want machine gun modem. <laughs> I think people woke up to how scary that is. When I believe it was Nigma that ran it, right? It was um, mind control on a doom, and he was just Gatling gunning, killing people oh, yeah. with the frenzy. Yeah, I remember that. I still think. We'll oh. see it oh. often, but... Okay, Toby is very lucky here. I mean, I say he's lucky, he might still go down, but that cook didn't connect, so Toby's gonna live. Barely, though. No yeah, cigar. Toby is something forced to back the base now. So far he's been doing Fata was uh, one minute. Makes uh, the right away from the trade off was obviously has a very good time. Sh Shadow on Morphling. Double his uh, last hits. That's true. And Shad has to be careful now. What, like, while he does have two points to attribute shift, he hasn't got one. Like, he hasn't really got any sort of pressure you can apply because he had to go for the double points of wave four. Gigi is doing this. He likes to do a lot. The Beastmaster rushes his Dominator. He don't anymore. I think he's the only Beastmaster I've yeah. seen in Russia anymore. Yeah, but he, he does this a lot. Get this this early. Get like a level five timing with a level three boss. You can just on this morph. But I up dying. A little bit of an awkward moment. He uh, fluffed the cookie, wasn't able to run away from Toby. I mean, I was getting ready to praise Fada. I wanted to say that he's like, cons he, the consistency of him on Snapfire, like I probably rate him as the best Snapfire I've seen recently. Um, outside, actually, let's exclude him mid. So obviously, you know, Ori might compete as China likes to run mid Snapfire. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it was it was a peculiar one. When you're winning with Monkey King 1 and Snapfire 2, I'm impressed on both accounts. Now now we should have this... Uh, we're going to have this Prophet level 6. Both side lanes need how they play. It can be suddenly that, that insane burst damage of... Don't respect. Radiance Courier has it's running been around. Slain. Sound he kills the couriers. Yeah, be careful. Yeah, you say that they should be careful. But 33 is getting very close to level six, and that's when yeah. that's when you're going to see that sync up with the nature's prophet that could easily just kill this morphling instantly. They, they, they see boom now. Oh, don't need to be. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of an awkward time as well, right? Like if you're playing this Quaspex Invoker, you want to force a reaction at the five minute mark with these catapults coming in so that you can't see pressure being applied. But when you look at it, like Skitter's already been hitting on the bot tower. Um, top, I think they at least got rid of the catapult there, which is surprising that 33 wasn't able to protect that. 
I, I think it was just he was expecting top. Yeah. But he was a bit scared oh. to do that. Speaking of the nature's profit effect. Power of play when you play in mid you get past level six. Suddenly you have this six seven minute timing where you had uh, match damage burst coming to your lane. Oh, it's that far. So let's go down again in the bot lane. Meanwhile, Brian has been burnt out in the mid lane. That's actually a nice synced up move because Boom ensured that there was no chance Prophet could rotate bot to try and like turn that. They are, they're doing so far pretty good job of liking uh, ours. They have, they're playing against a very push heavy lineup and they're really prioritizing defending these towers as much. Nah, Father reads well. He TPs in to ensure Boom won't move across. Just a little bit of pressure. It's a Q attempt, but this is a Quas Wex Invoker, so you can't hurt him. Up all the damage back to and now. Mana on Fata, you have some mana. I feel like. I, I want to say mana burning heroes rate is the most frustrating to deal with in the lane phase. It's happy now. Yeah, that, that, that is true. Mana. Sorry, gets three creative hard camp. Oh, really? Gold. Hell for the five. We However, oh, they, they might. They're thinking about it. Oh no, the stroke Sark made that play. Yeah, I think he was gonna go for it, but the stroke, right? That's the moment when you see the Raffin H bounce through, but you're hit by the stroke. You can't turn around to use the roar in time. They don't know quite how lucky they were. As Milan was walking around Invis next to him at that point. Again, one. Yes, he, uh, he has pushed his mid lane in the right. Make the stop more. It's not gonna lose my. They get this kill. He's on the ward no. right now. Yeah, Boom is the one who has to run away. They throw the sentry down, an ambitious attempt. They'll get him with the sprout, but he's got the quill and blade on the invoker. He didn't fall for that. He's watched those RTs he replays. Hard to make that. Get the roar, you have the lockdown. This one's a bit easier the... though. Kill. I mean, he can cookie though. He's gonna cookie and he oh, says, No, 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 we're gonna turn it around. Sunray is gonna come through. Father stands in it, so he's healthy, and boom, cannot finish the kill. He loses his core instead, as well as his four. Station, land there as well. Get the bounties as well. Trying to pressure Milan a little. I, uh, I mean, he'll get the rune. The problem is what happens next. He tries to snipe the Cory, which is just him baiting himself. 33 is moving across very slowly. And with a sentry, they'll throw out the primal roar and end the invoker's life. <laughs> Milan having some sense. More than kill on the. But like I said, good for right now, Viking has it. It might lose. <laughs> That's what I was about to yeah. say. You've jinxed yeah. it now. Also, Skitter is at a point where he can just poke away at Toby, so he might try and chip the bomb tower down to at least half HP. Might try it, but it, it is still pretty hard to put the tower. Just... Slaughter is pretty annoying. Is on the wind. But the top tower, that should be something that they... Unless they really want to... However, Boom doesn't have a TP. Oh, I don't think... Okay, they get a deny, but Shad didn't get the... He's going to be a bit annoyed. He didn't actually manage to get the foul hit on the Helm of Dom Creep, so... Not the biggest chunk of change for him. The, the, he kept seeing the fake pumps from Baranya. He kept pretending to TP up to ensure that Morph wouldn't come forward, but... Unless you got that Orca complete, I don't think Shad gives a crap. Though. 33's actually stuck here. Dive in. It gets thrown out. They have to turn around and deal with that instead. 33. Hanging around for a moment. Hesitates. And they will be able to get the kill on the boom in the end with the kisses. Plus the wrath of nature. And not just that. Fart ain't done. He cooks celery as well. Get the... Still like... Yeah. They get the egg on the shot. But it's like boom died two times now. And they also lost the tower. And they're going to lose the mid tower it looks like. Mud Golems is already taking uh, like uh, face of the game, taking also area control. Already, all right now. 
Yeah. It's, it's kind of funny that moment where you're like, well, they're not really taking early towers. And then two minutes later, ah, there we go. That's what we were waiting for. And it looks like 33 has no interest in doing the Necro build. I can kind of understand this though. Like you are playing against Tiny and Grimstroke. These two heroes can easily clear your Necronomicons. Kind of, it looks like he wants to play this uh, somewhat of like a, our... Uh, he goes for the Solar, he can amplify his threat uh, and uh, life steers damage a lot. It does feel... Or I don't think it's the worst. I think it's a fine game for that as well. I think he just likes to do this game and then the way that they want to. It's also interesting when you look on Skidder. Uh, he's not going for the Deso, I believe. It'll... I see. That's... Uh, that's what I'm a bit more surprised. Are you surprised about that's... Toby's death? <laughs> Grandma got a shotgun and Grandma don't play fair. I, so I, I think I know what it is. I'm pretty sure Baranya is going to build the Deso. Might. That's what I was also thinking. But uh, at the same time, I'm, he wants to go for the Orc. He's going to have Orchid Deso and then he's probably going to need a BKB. Have those items. There, if I'm the most... I don't think it's the way to go. I think the AC... AC as in general is a... They feel like, and it's also the armor. Uh, water is. All right, hear me, hear me out. They're like, "Yo, Branya, you can't die this game because if you're almost gonna die, Scare will just climb inside you. I don't know how he gets inside you. You're about roughly the same size. We'll figure those. Those. Those are the. You know, the, those are the extra details inside. Then we'll Cookie to heal you. Some Ray to heal you. You can't possibly die. If you are Branya, how much do you believe your team right now? <laughs> Exactly. Like you may be a bit concerned about this whole idea of, of of Skidder climbing up inside you, but other than that, like thumbs up the whole plan. I still wonder how he uh how, how does he actually get out of people without you know, hurting them? It's already it's a deep four, right? Like, I, it really got deep for me yesterday when I was... Because Grimstroke, right? Like, uh, life still is good against Grimstroke because you infest and like, oh, we don't care about Soulbind. Right? How does that work? Is, is that just like a poetic truly becoming one as you're no longer just soulbound? You are now physically and soulfully intertwined? Yes. <laughs> Pex is like, Jesus, I need a few drinks before we get into this. <laughs> I was thinking, Pudge, Pudge, uh, how to do by axe and you eat. There you go. So We've done it, boys and girls. We found a way that Pudge can be drawn. <laughs> yeah. If you can justify a snap fire mid because she's going to rush axe, why can we not justify a Pudge mid because he's going to rush axe? Oh, that poor hero. He's so dog crap right now. I wonder, like, I might be okay with it if they... It's a start if they at least give him back the ability to kill himself. That was one thing bad, and then just your passive is kind of bad right now. And it used to be good when it actually gave... Yeah, uh, oh, it was a ridiculous uh, amount. It was a ridiculous amount of regen though, right? Like it was literally... Yeah, yeah. I remember the offlane Pudge build. You literally just maxed out your passive and built Aorus and Pipe and crap like that. It was obviously very strong, but they could have turned it down maybe. So now the passive is again pretty, pretty bad, so... Ooh. Hard to make the hit. Smoke on smoke. What, what, what's going on with Snap? What, what's Fada's hero doing right now? All right, ignore that. We need to get to the fight because Morphling's been brought down on the side. Shy is found, and the rest of Viking have to run for the high hills. Aramis, you're not a raiding hero this game. That's the wrong way. Blinks away just in time to make his escape. I mean, they're just putting. Vikings <laughs> are left in a small area. They can farm. Toby even went to Midas here. What was it? Really? Late game farm. Greedy son of a gun. Alright, sorry, I'm just getting distracted by Fada. Like, you're seeing sure. this, right? You're seeing the... Oh, you mean the bug? <laughs> yeah. The random... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that happened some... I don't, I don't remember what happened. There's like something... Yeah, that's something about some cookie... Some cookie... 
It does have to happen. I think it's to do with like if the cookie attaches to the target, but the target doesn't survive long enough to land or something. I believe it was. I remember what is the, what it, what makes it. I... Who cares what makes? Well, I kind of yeah. care what makes it because I want to make it. <laughs> I think it goes away if you die though. So you That's why I, I can never die. We're not allowing this, okay? Yeah. If yeah, I yeah. if I was a dragon father, I would want my clearly brain damaged child dragon to look like this. So free and so happy with the world. <laughs> it's like when you're playing this as well. I mean, you get used to it because it, hap it has happened for a while. But when it first time happened to me, I, I was playing. Like it just gets worse when you go to show well, Not worse, it gets better when you go to showcase. And he's just got this goofy smile. Yeah. <laughs> Like right now, it was like, what's going on with the rest of the game? I was like, I don't care. I'm just invested in the, the, the cute story of this cute dragon and how he's going to overcome his severe brain damage. He's clearly suffering. <laughs> yeah. Solar Crest almost. AC almost. Those items like them trying to play much faster I see them killing seller right now nope you see i'm seeing it right now he's uh bye dead it's like there's no there's no play there right i'll soul bind him hero just walks over and he infests them like there's, there's no way that you ever get away from skitter in this game yeah this life there has some quite a lot of uh at the speed right now it's gonna be pretty hard aramis might end up dying here Last time he blinked away. This time, not so lucky. He's going to try for the TP away. He just about gets a one hit was needed. And a munch on a fairy fire just to live, though. It was something he would have liked. Viking skin. Yeah, you can feel that, need, right? Definitely the Shad, like... Well, Shad has a month right now, but he's still... <laughs> Not gonna All right, be so let's pass on much. Chad. Chad's not getting you back in this game. Let's go through him. Boom. All right, that's not getting yeah. us back in the game either. I know, Toby. Toby, what? Maybe, minus. maybe, maybe. Well, yeah, he has a minus. will help you get back in this game if you survive long enough. There's smoke to moving, by the way. Just, they need to catch the back lines here. They can't go on the slice there. This way, they're gonna kill. The they need to kill Fata, and he's here. No, don't kill him. Don't kill the dragon. Look at him. Okay, actually, you guys haven't got all oh, wait. No, they got the fall off damage to bring him down. The primary war is going to come out. The turnaround opportunity to melt for him. Buy back from Fata. He's angry at this fight. You killed his friendly neighborhood dragon. You killed the egg as well. But now Shad needs to get the hell out of Dodge and do it quick. Cookie. Let's get a chase and in. Celery's like, I've had this experience before. Not again. Nice stun coming out from the morph. The problem is with Varanya there as well. And the four staff not getting him far enough. They just didn't have the length to get Celery out. Hot down, but... <laughs> an angry dragon damn you killed me yeah i mean the, the look at the look at the face now just, i don't yeah. think mortimer looks happy at all i mean he does look a bit happy when i'm looking <laughs> he looks smug now he's like that serves you right for trying to fight us uh I, that's true damn it. why is like why is mortimer not our official dota mascot for everything for my we're in here doing that you know, that's well. Yeah, I think the BKB makes him really hard for them to. Oh. I wonder if Skitter is still gonna. Just. I, I don't think. Basher. Yeah, I think you need like Basher and like, I will say Heaven's Halberd. If you... But Heaven's Halberd is usually when you're worried about dying, right? The alternative is maybe like a Nullifier in this type of game could be really strong. Nullifier and Lysander in general is a really good item. What you get from that item is you get armor, but you get damage, and that's what mm -hmm. you need. But uh, it's an expensive item. If it has the most. Put against the slaughter because you can purge, but that's kind of. Any other reason? That's sure. That, but. Uh, I feel like it doesn't make the most. Does it purge off the. Go no, you can't get rid of Ghost War. Viking, they're gonna try and get rid of some mud golem heroes here. They smoked out of the base. Maybe be careful where they reveal though, because hawks are a boot. 
I don't know what reason I see is. for the Basher being somewhat nice is that he has a lot of attack speed, right? If they can oh, protect Bardock? his egg. They're gonna find him. Start. That's your Bardock early, uh, I think that's your early warning sign for Mud Golems. They're like, nope. Now, if Skitter was a good teammate, he would climb inside for A3 right now. Too bad he just dies before. <laughs> no, 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 fight free. Screw Fada, he's gone. Ah, oh, tree, tree. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. You know what it is? Fight free, he's like, you want me to climb inside you so we leave? And he's like, fight free, he's looking at his little children. He's like, no, I refuse to leave my pets. <laughs> like, you can only hey. take one luggage when you abandon ship here. Primer all long range on a boom. I, that's, uh... That was ambitious. That, that was definitely weird for him. I mean, he doesn't really push towers that fast. No, I, I guess he's I guess. just role playing his name. You know? He definitely exploded. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was ambitious. But yeah, about the basher a little bit. You know, it like, I think it's a solid idea from Skitter that he got. What what do they really need is this egg from, and mainly it's the more hitting it so you can just get on this more bashing maybe bash might be not uh make the board uh yeah right maybe that that's why i can see it. see in the last fight hit uh one bash might might be the difference that because also milan was still level 11 at that time now he's level 12 egg is gonna be harder yeah, I guess my counter argument in that situation, right? Like to, to, to play devil's advocate is if that's what you need, Heaven's Halberd. It's a morphling, right? It's like if you use a Heaven's Halberd on the morph in this fight when you plant you plant the egg, there is no chance in hell they can bring down that egg. I guess maybe like the counter then, you know, I'm literally playing devil's advocate myself now is you don't have the most reliable lockdown on my goals. It's just primal raw. Like cookie, yeah, you can say how great it is. You could ravage the whole team. You have to actually hit the cookies though. Oh, we're on here, gonna die. Yep. It was way too quiet yeah. in this game anyway. Look at Skitter though. Action. Blood. Oh no. Celery's Cel like, not me. Not again. Not like this. Skitter's Mike chasing must it. Run. <laughs> yep. It looks like actually Skitter's the one who needs to run now. He almost has his peak. You can tell. That item. Oh. You can tell someone's going to die. They find Celery in the end. Uh, bit interesting buyback though. Uh, well, I, I was about to say you can tell that whoever wins this fight is going for Roche, right? Like they're both posturing. They both are at that stage where they can melt through the big boy in the pit. Toby, that's smoke Slivering in. Scared up. Looking to move away. Has the raise though, so that's gonna be a fluffed initiation from Toby. And you get nothing for your attempt. You just have to walk away, and you can guarantee Mud Golems are not gonna allow you to walk into that pit. Big Golem has been caught as Skitter is inside it right now, just staying on top of Turby. Prime Raw comes out, infest out, and goodbye Slardarm. With that, goodbye Viking's hopes of taking this rush. Pressure for the Viking to make. They like really want to force really, really hard. They want them there. Uh, like go for rush. It's like pretty unrealistic. Gash. Run like that, you break the small. I guess they kind of tried to catch them off guard, but it's, it was really. Bye 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 bye. They you're you you know that they're gonna. My comments were ready for that. For my coffers. And it's awkward, right? Because you don't. I don't feel like you have that much burst on Viking right now, right? So it's not like when you made that move in, you're making it into a choke point yeah. deep in these towers. One hero dropping isn't gonna be that quick. And yeah, they don't really have that much burst yet. I mean, Shad can kind of do some damage, but it's like I was also so close for. Play. That's bad for them, but they're still like I we have been saying a lot to like Brace Magnolians, but I do still think that Vikings still has a shot that they win the game. Chad is getting strong. 
Life Stealer, he's gonna have uh, Scotty almost. It's gonna be a strong hero to damage as well. <laughs> Aramis forces out the Primal Roar from 33, but will die nonetheless. And that at least gets the kill, so he stops Beastmaster from getting that big chunk of gold. Now, the problem is, on the other side of the map, you could say you might go and split up a little bit for the wild one, because they did stick scare in the enemy base, wailing away at the buildings. Yeah, that's, that should be uh, at least one set of... Maybe not Rex, but the to tower at least, but they're not. gonna leave it. Yeah, not quite yet. Uh, it turns out it's hibernation season for life, so the skit is like, let me just wait inside you. I want the HP and go again. They definitely want the power at least. Oh, they go for Branya though. They're trying to jump. Pandy didn't get the BKB out in time. He's going to be brought down. Dead. Buyback comes out from Aris. Sunray trying to heal him up. Egg on the side, but they've already lost Bada as well. The Aegis is gone, and Viking are able to move away from the egg quick enough. They can reset and look to go again. Toby, not able to blink just yet, is interrupted by the boar, which means that Skidder should be able to get away with this one. That was um, yeah, some slight misplay from Borani. Maybe not expecting the burst damage, but catch him. He doesn't have a TP. He's like, no, I make my own map, guy. Oh no. Oh, oh, oh no. Mega kill. Good moves from Vikings here. But yeah, like from Boronia, he has a cheese there, but he's like, I don't think he had any reason that tower that like Maybe he felt so strong with the big heavy that they can't burst him, but Toby actually having some nice attack speed and being able to can get a chunk his HP before he gets the BKB. Dice. Get the cheese off. Yeah. Very important defense for Viking. Well, I think Varany is probably feeling like an old man as well, right? Because he had enough time to press the BKB, but he didn't do the essence ring, the cheese, or the wand. <laughs> Aramis. Yeah. Whoop. Glimmer kick to get him away. Dust to reveal him. 33 could not throw out the roar, but the kisses. Die right here, though. I mean, they try and he's so goddamn tanky. Skit is gonna finally jump out and end his life though. However, the moving in by Shad on top of Baranya as well. Sun strike through, but the primal roll thrown out and Shad bit off way more than he can shoot. He gets hit by the cookie. He uses the BKB and wonders what the hell he was doing it for. He says, Oh, that's right, I was role playing Baranya. Turned around because they kind of Aramis was buying a lot of time and they really thought they could give away and they thought they could help him. That that gets caught off, caught, caught off guard and he just dies. Uh, now it should be alright. There's no buyback on Shed or it, should. it might be more than one. Like they they've got the Alpha Wolf and Prophet isn't even here yet. Brandy's going for the backstab. Boom! The Linkers gets popped. Four stuff to try and get away. Nice back from Toby to save the day. And Skitter, he's going to be able to munch up on the cheese. The egg's going to go down. The Slardar is going to be left behind. And boom, just about able to get away. The racks won't be so lucky as instead of it being one, you can guarantee it's at least two now without your Slardar for 85 seconds. Well, now it's for sure to... What was the buyback about? You have a... You know your two heroes can't live. You're fighting three versus five without your beacon. Nice. A bit sloppy from Viking there. They could have lost only one side, maybe. Well, they need to be careful. Lose. They could lose more right yeah. now if Shad continues like this. Yeah. The shit Fata is fast. Whoa. <laughs> I, dude, this is the, the dragon of speed. Yeah. Tranquil's wind lace and a giant life stealer inside you. Good God. <laughs> He's like, bang your drums, bang your drums. <laughs> oh, the slaughter. I mean, they got Egg in 20. They're posturing for yeah, it. Yeah, they, they should definitely try it. I think the Slaughter is probably the after the Morphin is their strongest hero. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a lot if he's dead for sure. Yeah, he's definitely the secondary carrier, right? Like, if you look at the comparison of who's do, got to do the heavy lift in these fights, Mud Golems, it's obviously Lifesteal Knight and the uh, Nature's Prophet. The Viking is definitely the Morphling and the Slardar. Oh, Avalanche. Skidder. Skid Skid he's just gone. They're going to commit the egg pretty deep. The slow on the attack speed means they can't bring it down. Primal Roar being thrown out. Vada is also going to die, but Milan is in way too deep. He's trying to burn these heroes off and burn them down, but the silence out it ensures that Sunray will come to an early end, and so will his life. Nice defense for Viking. We knew it was going to happen, right? It it's, it's an armlet hero. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Either getting maybe a broke it there. He didn't have the rage, so still a uh, nice play from Viking doing that without the slaughter. Definitely still in the game. You have the morphling that can 
a good morphing game and he's getting bigger and bigger item and it's already pretty still likes a uh, gets roared the butterfly will make him harder to kill for the prophet and lifestealer as well yeah and it's kind of going to be interesting if my golems start to itemize to kind of counter Rack that like you can see mkb is going to be queued up by skidder i i really would love to see a heaven's habit on one of these heroes though shad is still not buying anything it's showing what he wants to buy for the it's kind of cool i mean in a way you're you're giving a lot of gold as well investing but at the same time skitter wants to make his oh, he's already going for yeah i i think it's like obvious as well right like skitter's yeah. a carry player as well when you think about morphling if he's not building the shotgun which really he can't in this game BKB is always online and you're up against the lifestealer. Then the alternative is you go for this this stats heavy build with, you know, the butterflies, your third item. The butterfly, I, I would say for Morphling here, either they're like satanic or, or butterfly. Mm. Item. Both are pretty good. Want to get the butterfly. So. Yeah. And I think for Skidder, both, like, both those items get screwed up by the MKB, right? Like from a damage perspective if they've got a satanic then okay you just want to burn through them quicker and mkb definitely achieves that yeah they're gonna both teams gonna get the russian now my golems they want to push the lane control the rush area and watch the which the setting up good video here and they want to hold this area vikings they have to get these lanes really shoved in and that Think about smoke. I, I don't know if they want to leave. Give them Russian. Last Rax is uh, post. You don't have power there. So finding that page is the Rax refresh. Mm -hmm. Against the Nasus Prof as well. Like you have this awkward situation where the waves have to be amply pushed out, or there is just a risk that Baranya goes in for the Mega Creeps. That is probably going to be so close. Uh, this is what I like to see. He's like, well, this game is looking uh, a little bit rough, lads. I think a fire into Rapier is the only way this is going to work. Rapier is still far away. Get this but, butterfly. They but it's about having it. dreams back to That is the way of playing. You need to play to win. Have that rape. The item that you... That's not a, a clean slate to do it all the time. Smoke on smoke. Moving away. That was almost awkward for Mud Golems because this is their soft, squishy backline. They don't. Oh, I say squish. They're pretty bulky, but they don't want to be the first ones initiated on. We jump on Fata right away. That can be like a start for the fight for Viking. However, it's pretty hard. Like either either one of these Phoenix or 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 the um, or oh, the snap snapfire. Fire. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Snap. Catch one of these heroes out of car out of push. Definitely win the fight, but. Obviously, it's a lot easy if you're playing far back, so... Sorry. Russian... Ball. It's a nice word here that... Uh, it's gonna play... Has been slain. Hmm? Oh, Skater, of course, can very easily go in without much hesitation. This Russian will die really fast. Yeah. I don't think they've realized how fast it's going yeah. down. Yep, fought up. Just suicidally charged towards the enemy team. The egg has already been picked up. And Celery, whoa, boy. Back up there. Getting ahead of himself. That, uh, almost has his axe, so he at level 18. Level, the level on the fresh uh, axe. I have refresher axe, and you're going to be really... I don't see them really killing. And, and unlike the people at my level, he, usually you don't drag someone into that Ags often. It's just the extra hits makes it impossible for your opponents to get through. Very rarely, That's though. Good. Yeah, it's it, you have to be ready. It has to be ready. It's like one of those things that you need. Maybe let's say the say the morphing is like, then you can like, someone is about to die. It's, it's rare we ever see it, pal, but there I mean, are the, situations. Yeah, yeah that's like you want to do it only if someone is about to die as well. You don't really want to do it. 
Yeah, I think the, the other awkward part, right, is the cast range. You have to be close, yeah. and obviously, if you have to do that save someone, they probably already have multiple heroes on top of them that are currently wailing away at them. Yep. Definitely finite balance, and we'll see how that plays out in this next fight, because you can guarantee Mud Golems want to end it now. Big ass creep wave coming in. Racks are exposed. And although I do like Italian, I don't think this meatball is going to stop much. Jump in. Tunnel to Shad. Bring him low, but it would actually force stuff away. Primal Roar. Toby's just gone, though. They can't get to the egg, and Shad needs to move away. And boom! Left behind and brought down by this scary snap bar. And as a result, your racks, they're going to be fearing for their life as well as they're just hanging in there with 50 HP. The creep army can finish it off. The soulbind comes out. They can't reach them though. Milan dies through again. Sun Ray as well. Tiny's going to be brought down by Vax Galore. But for what? Viking are just melting one by one. Jumping Toby. Looking for the mini ravage, but not good enough. The second egg goes down. Aramis with the slowest attack speed I've ever seen. Not able to do anything other than press enter, type GG, and say pass. Yep. Uh, the last defense watch for Viking to do against the Aegis pressure and uh, cheese ball. So you have this buy even if you have this buyback, he just pops one egg.
Radiant Team Ban. You have ten seconds left. Dire Team Ban. Yo, dog. Y'all ready? Get ready to go live in five. You have ten seconds left. What's up? We back. ASMR BTS brought to you live from Quiet Zone 101. I know how Finns feel about this. So you can now rage at that random person. Okay, take that out on them. I know Finnish people hate being referred to as like discount Swedish people or partly Swedish. Gonna take the Chris. Damn it, you're too nice. <laughs> you have okay, I'll tell you what was too nice, by the way. That life stealer from last game. Bam! Segway. Back in. Mud golems. Boom. They're like, nah, we ain't gonna chase nothing. See? Told you they weren't going to change nothing. Why change something that I think they have, like... If I'm correct, I think they won, like, six... <laughs> Dude, this is like the equivalent of... You know when you get in your pub games, you keep uh, predicting a win with the same hero? And you're like... You don't care anymore. You're like, this is impossible to beat. Um... It reminds me of... You know what it actually reminds me of? It's like, this is the next evolution of Fada. It used to be Jakiro, right? Now it's not far. Where he played a lot of ogre in Lions yep. where they were playing. Left. It kind of fit on Nico baby as well in a way. Kind of play just give me everything. Give me all the buffs, give me all the farm. So Vladas was now maybe Father can play a little bit more of his Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's like cool, right? Because I think yeah, you had the ogre phase. I think the Jakiro phase was another big thing for him, right? It's like cause um it's just I mean, you know, as a boss fight player, right? It's just a dumb hero. It's like, it was very simple to play. It let you focus on everything else in the game instead of what your hero had to do. There's probably a, a Jakiro picker somewhere in the chat bumping his desk right there. Well, how dare you? Jakiro is the most mechanically complicated hero in the game. Ice paths, though. Not always the easiest. Yeah, just Gotta use all the other that. spells. Screw it. Ice paths are bonus. Like, everyone's on fire. Like, I've done my part. Just don't screw out, push the fire to everyone. Yeah, but that's the problem. Nowadays, you have to, right? Like, the good old days, I could just take more stats, which is more in, which is more spamming out of fire. Good old days. Or old days for sure. Hey, hey, I, I, I'll have you know I was a big fan of Sing Sing, no Lucent Beam, max stats, and Frisbee's build, okay? 
<laughs> you have ten Viking seconds has left. Way that they crafted so. You have five seconds left. Go with the draw, Ranger. I'm a bit scared. Playing this. Somewhat good here. How you can counter the yeah, the laning stages counter the part of the hero. But anyway, enough. one of the Shad, Shad specials. Shad is like very known for his draw ranger. General Vikings is a draw team. Good. I, I would say it's a nice, nice pick here. Now they can ban. ban. Mm -hmm. They don't want to play. Left. And at the same time, they are really good. Lifestealer as well. Lifestealer can work against Draw Ranger if you cap closer. Back those. And right now, banning some of the heroes against the Draw. Like the Night Stalker. And both, are, both can be really. Probably gonna find something, but the, the most annoying. Yeah, I guess maybe like the, the kind of crux of this, right, though, is we talked about with Viking usually having the final pick, they'd like to save Shad's hero. I guess this way they can build around Shad's hero still. Um, I would say, like, with the lifestealer point, one thing to consider is it's very easy for a lifestealer to go for a Heaven's Halberd as his second or third item. So that will hurt Drow a lot. Um, and that gap closing point, right? Credit where credit is due, Mud Golems now have three heroes to figure out this in type hero, whether it's something like a Slardar, which won't be in this game because it's banned, but something along that kind of blink initiation line. Fire mid, your axe, and then. Life's the rain. Of course! I mean, this is going to be the mid snap fire. How could I forget? You know, Baranya, I've seen him play. No. Uh, it's going to be Fata mid, and uh, I'm going to go back to his. Whoa. Hunter. Going deep. That's one way. I, I actually, I was, I was talking about this with Pike out the other day. It was a Mirana. And they was like, uh, so this might be like a cool Mirana. I was like, what if I just took that Mirana mid right now? It's like, Mirana, you five. It's like, bam, caught our opponents off guard. And I was like, but here's the problem. The biggest person caught off guard in that situation isn't your opponents. It's Mirana who's going, what? What? I ain't ever, I ain't ever de -ward into my life. I'm a mid. Well, that's not true. They, they de the mid, but that's about it. You have a, you can take your knife. Bane is one of the, at least I personally like a lot. I have these few. Game not so nice. Uh, one tool you buy a little They're also painting being have, uh, so if you get a good chance you can potentially make a life series fight uh, if your team makes a lot of space for you, get the good life series can can just be out of course, this is the the risk with the bane pick, right? It's like now yep. the fiend's grip opportunity is kind of gone. Um left. Also, your initiation. Like, if I look at these three first picks, Mud Golem's pretty strong on in initiation. Viking, like, very susceptible to just being counterattacked right now, right? So, I, 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 this, yeah. Viking. Time here, so that's. Panic! Hurry up! You're, you're now celery. What's it gonna be? They have immortal. Their drafter. No, Pudge! Pick Pudge! Okay, pick Pudge. Dude, I'd be the worst person on the team. I'd like just be trolling my own team, yelling at the, my captain repetitively. Okay, so that gives them some, some front line, right? Because this was a bit of a worry is that so far, Viking. They still lack initiation, but they at least have someone that can stand up front while this Drow just kind of pokes and prods from afar. You have 10 seconds left. It's not even that bad against Leicester. You have 5 seconds left. Doesn't have the most. Lifesteal.
Volt. Let's. Do you think the life still is, uh, as the game goes on is more worrisome for Underlord though? Because I guess the, the thing to consider is Underlord in the mid game relies on his aura to mitigate damage, but Life Stealer has magic immunity to just get full damage up against you. Yeah, I mean, I think Life Stealer is good later on in the game. You have 10 seconds left. I don't think it's as bad for Underlord as you some you some patches some time ago. Oh yeah, definitely. Might, might kill him. Garixia. They're setting up a bit kind of a good team fight now. Definitely make some nice damage. So maybe just getting like a wall into cogs. Fight. And at the same time we have now clockwork dark sir like You have ten seconds left. Radiant team ban. Yeah, Dark Seer is still decent as a hero. Not not as ridiculous as it was, right? Because they did nerf uh, the Surge, so you can't go past a uh, certain speed now, which is the haste speed. Not as, as good anymore. Um, you have 10 seconds yeah, and they definitely try have been trying to like make Vacuum more relevant, right? So now, one point Vacuum on the lane, you can actually get value, especially if you've got a hero like the Clockwork. Vacuum. I think mud golems like maybe just some some nuke type damage, something that can burst, uh, and then Vike. And I want to say that they need an initiator because right now they still lack that in hero. Viking needs. Viking needs. Something like tiny. Yeah, it's about, it's about like tiny was the low bear, like low hanging fruit. I was like, there's boom, there's a drought. Ow. Hmm. Is like find something that can. Ow. You have ten seconds left. Mud golem. You when I get a hero, that kind of be. You could go for tiny. Also gives them that burst as well that I was mentioning. Yeah, it covers. Um, but they probably they want a hero that they don't have the last. 